All right, so it's uh, 15 minutes later. Um, I've had a chance to calm down a little bit. You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast, number one podcast in Raider Nation. Proud member of the Crow's Nest Podcast Network. Tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. This episode brought to you by DC4L Custom Tees. Check them out at dc4lcustomtees.com. This episode is on fire. It's time to pillage another podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler. Join us always. Why oh, your boy, shit? What are you sipping on, doggy? Oh, man. Well, I mean, at times like these, it's only right that we bring the proper beer. And so, your boy found the perfect beer for such an evening after which we've tasted defeat. The Sufferfest Brewing or Beer Company. And this is their flyby Pilsner because we're going to hope that this week flies by so we can move on to next week, hopefully celebrate a victory against Houston. You see on the can here it says, we'll sweat for beer. I know Raider Nation's not sweating this loss, right? Uh, I don't know, dog. <laughs> What's the chat say, Bobby? What's the chat say? <laughs> yeah, the chat's blaming fucking everybody. Pointing fingers is happening right now we'll, in the uh, chat. <laughs> Bobby got blamed. This is a 5.1, by the way, in case you were wondering. It's a nice little smooth sipper. You, I mean, you could you could drink this all all day long. Your boy over here yeah. was like, man, oh, this is a pilsner. I can drink this all day long. Yeah, this is like mm-hmm. a, I could drink a million of these. 5.1, a little heavier hitter than your average pilsner, but nothing that's going to put you in the hospital. Um, you know, yeah, really nice. Unless you got a serious drinking problem. And, uh, <clears throat> but your boy, but you, yeah. but but your boy, your boy Bobby also brought us some other brews. So we we might have to do a second chela later today. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, just spoiler alert: that is a sour. <laughs> so we're bringing you the Sufferfest in the sour, <laughs> which we thought was thematically appropriate for it was, y'all. It's appropriate though on this Sunday, without question. <laughs> Uh, just a reminder for all of y'all, follow us on Twitter at Pillaging Pod, at Kenny Stapler, at Che underscore PJ4F, at Kane MT6, at CN Podnet. And since he's here, make sure you follow Bobby Wasabi too. Yeah, at Bobby Wasabi with a whole shitload of numbers. What's the numbers, Bobby? <laughs> 4080, bro. 4080, there you 48. go. 48. <laughs> okay, oh. good. Okay, okay. Yeah. At Bobby Wasabi, 4080. 48. Yeah, that's easy. Um, again, merchandise, one nation Uh Johnny's been killing it, man, on social media. Yeah, man. Um, look for the new ad drop. Hurting on... feelings, too. He's hurting a lot of feelings. Hey, <laughs> hey man, probably hated, dog. Hey. Probably hated. I mean, it fits, it fits him, man. It fits um, him, dog. If you haven't pulled the trigger on some One Nation fanware gear yet, I recommend you do so. Yeah. We'll be rocking some of that gear here on the, on the podcast shortly. In the meantime, I'm wearing this really nice autumn wind shirt provided oh, yeah. to me by uh, David and Melody. That's right. Um, some of our family here. Our some boy our, David Marks, man. Shout out, dog. Shout out to you, David. It's a nice one. We haven't worn it yet. He gave it to us at the tailgate. Um, yeah. But it would be, it's been so hot in here. I was like, I don't want to sweat through this one. <laughs> I typically like to rock a new T-shirt a few times before I wash it. That's why there I got go. the undershirt on underneath. I, you know, I'm trying to be a gearhead, you know. <laughs> you trying to be a gearhead, bro? <laughs> yeah. You fucking yeah. kicking that berry right now. No, no high beast, no high beast in the studio. <laughs> but I just try to keep it crisp. Uh, again, our longstanding partner, DC Four L Custom Tees. If you want an official pillaging podcast T shirt, you're gonna have to hit him up. Um, so, and if you want some of the old designs and stuff like that, that's that's been discontinued. Uh, send him a message; he might be able to oblige you. I know he's got all those designs, even though they're not hosted. Doesn't mean you can't get it. So, and if you want that printed on a special something, hit him up too. Dan's gonna be like, dude, stop telling people to DM me. <laughs> like, Dan, come on, man, you're come a nice on, guy. Dan, you could um, dog. Tonight's episode also brought to you by mybookie.ag. That's right. Um, you're gonna bet on the games, make them a little more interesting, win some money. Yeah. Pay down that car note. Yeah. Throw your whole paycheck at mybookie.ag. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't 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 fucking lead our fa- our fans down the down the wrong path, bro. Okay? Dog, we hey, got listen. we got what uh we got like six points in this game. Five points in this game, dog. Okay. Okay. We did not cover. Well, no. <laughs> so if you took Green Bay, <laughs> okay. you're sitting pretty. 
But <laughs> more on that later, right? More on that later. I mean, you don't necessarily have to bet on our games, man. <laughs> bet on other fucking games. God damn. I got a note here uh, talking about the tailgate show. We don't have a tailgate next week, obviously. We're not back at home for two more weeks. Uh, I will not be home next week, actually. I am on the road next week. So that's right. There will be no show. I know it's off and then on and then off, but I trust um, that that's probably our last weekend off for the rest of the season. So bear with us. We will talk about the Houston games tonight, though. We will not leave you without that. So we're going to give you a little bit of our breakdown for Houston before we leave tonight. So check that out. But do check out the live stream, regardless, tailgate or not, on YouTube.com. Uh, starting to really pick up some steam now. It's great. Uh, we love our diehard uh, chat pillagers here that we see every week. Um, who knows? You may end up in my house like Bobby Wasabi, <laughs> which is hella cool. <laughs> hella cool. Um, you know, and if, if you're if you're an audio only person, hey, man, I, I rock with you. I don't really watch podcasts myself, so I'll just say that. We're not mad. But we did put out a call for folks to subscribe last there week. Go. There you go. And you guys answered the call. I really appreciate that. Let's keep it going. Again, we have a goal on YouTube. So rather, whether or not you're, you're watching this or not, please give us a subscription. If you listen and you support the show, that's one great way you can help us out without spending a dime. Um, also, you know, if you do have a dime, <laughs> if you got a dollar, you want to give it to us, uh, PayPal pal.me slash pj4f you there can you send go. us a dollar buy us a beer whatever you want to do and we'll shout out those donations a little bit later Absolutely. um just a real quick recap or i guess overview tonight we'll do some quick hits from the past two weeks we got some catching up to do um we couldn't make it on air last week yeah. um and then of course we're going to recap today's game We'll have Kane on for his MVP and Trash Can Player of the Week and then some I got some good questions for Kane to help uh make sense of this loss today. Uh, and of course your calls. We'll be taking your calls later in the show. So um, without further ado, let's get into it, bro. Yep. <laughs> Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, was injured. Oh yeah. Thursday night football. This is true. This is a little weird for us to start off with another team's news, but I, I just, I got something to say. This is really Raiders related. This is Raider nation related. There we go. I need to take a drink of beer first. There you go. Drink it. Drink that beer. man. Don't even hesitate. Man. Shout out to juice. Shout out chat. juice. And shout out to Tulare all day. Everybody. Um, all right, so I'm going to say this. And I already posted this on Twitter, but I will restate it. I never wish for a player to get injured. Uh-huh. That being said, I hope Patrick Mahomes makes a full recovery and never plays football again. <laughs> Facts. That's, that's not all I have to say about this. A lot of you guys were head over heels at Patrick Mahomes getting injured, already claiming the division as our own, saying the Chiefs will never recover from this. They will slide. Oh, man. Okay, they beat Denver. Yeah, in, they did. In, in Denver's Denver. Yeah. Casey yeah, has talent. Denver's Denver, bro. Denver's Denver. That's fucking horrible uh, over there. They make Dolphins fans uh, proud. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said jealous. I'm proud. They make Dolphins front office jealous, uh, but they, you know, they beat Denver. What it is, what it is, and, and they got Green Bay next week. So that that might be an L for them. But look, they got playmakers at every level of their offense. You still got Tyreek Hill, who's back. Didn't get a lot of targets, but he's back. He looked springy. You still he got, got tra- touchdown, right? He got, got that fucking touchdown. Got his touchdown. You got you, you got Travis Kelsey. Um, you know, and you got a running back. You got Nick Chubb, right? No, no, not no. Chubb. Chubb's they, on. No, on the they Browns, got, they bad. got, they got Lashawn McCoy. Bro. Yeah, Lashawn McCoy. I don't know. what I was thinking about the Browns. Oh well, yeah, because we were talking about the Broncos. Yeah. If you know my brain, you, that makes sense. To you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, and, and McCoy looked all right in that game. Again, albeit it was against the Broncos, and and more wasn't all that suck either in that game. Am I wrong, Che? I mean, again, it was, it was against the Broncos. It, it, yeah. But if you think they're going to lose Patrick Mahomes and just lose every single game he's not playing in, I think you're tripping. And if you think that the Raiders are just a shoe in you can argue with me on that previous point, but if you think we're a shoe in to just win this division because Mahomes might miss two or three games, you're also tripping. Yeah. We still have to take care of business on our own court, on our yep. own field. Yep. That didn't happen today. And I told you last or two weeks ago that wasn't going to happen today. So as we get into that game, you will notice that there is no shock or surprise or gloom in Che and I's voices and, and hell, even probably no. Kane. And I know Kane's pissed off at some players, but at the same time, there's no shock over here, okay? No. And we still got a tough Houston team next week, and we get to come home. And I think Detroit's shown you that they're not the Detroit Lions of like 2000, right? The Detroit Lions will show up and play ball with you. Yeah. 
So it is all but a shoe in. And, uh, you know, if you want to celebrate Mahomes injury because he frustrates you and all that, I know it's all in good phone. I know, I know as a human being, you don't want to he- see him suffer, save for a few of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's some of you. There's some of there's you. There's some of you out there. And that's fine. I don't judge. I don't judge. <laughs> but just to think that that, that one, that one thing is, is really going to hamper them the whole way. And yeah, their defenses suck, right? Their defense is a suck ass, but you know, I, I just don't see it, man. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. Is, is, is Mahomes and, and the other part of this is I think Mahomes will come back sooner than expected, and I think he's going to look better than you realize. Mm. And that's just how I feel. He's young, so he's going to recover quick. And that dude, like him or not, he's he's a fucking warrior, bro. No, he's hey, man. Competitive. I mean, the motherfucker, the, that motherfucker. As much as we hate his motherfucking guts, mm. okay. As much as we hate his guts, fax machine for obvious reasons, right? Um, I mean, what can you t- what can you say, man? The motherfucker can play, dog. He can play. He can play. He's physical. He can do a lot of different things, man. And and that's why people hope that he's out longer than than you know than they're saying, mm-hmm. or than than people feel that he's gonna be out because we know what he can do if he's on the field. You know what that means. KC is never really out of a game if that if that dude has the ball in his hands. So, um, yeah, like you said, though, we don't wish no harm. We don't wish no, no. permanent damage on this dude. Um, I do hope he misses a few more games than, than we think mm-hmm. um, and, and that they do slide. But they got a lot of weapons over there, man. They got a lot of weapons, and they got a good coach, regardless of whether or not mm-hmm. we like to – uh, acknowledge that they got a good coach. As long as it's a regular season, they got a good coach. Yeah, <laughs> right. If it's not the playoffs, uh, you know, yeah, they're that, gonna be all right. They're last I checked, right. you know, they're still in first place. The playoffs hasn't started yet, and Andy Reid's looking pretty damn good over there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And this, this is a, a, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but it's hot. Let me get this button. This is definitely hot. Let me get this button ready. Those of you that are cheering for this injury and rejoicing this injury are doing so because you're afraid of Patrick Mahomes. Oh. Those are facts. You're scared of him. Those are facts. He should be. He's he's like the Steph Curry of the NFL. Oh shit. He's changing the game. He's changing the game, bro. <laughs> he does look like one of Steph Curry's like he does. grown up daughters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hot take too. <laughs> I like that. And before you think I'm some Patrick Mahomes dick rider, look, just game recognized game. You know what I mean? He's good, man. He's a problem. He's a reason why he's a big reason why they're in first place. But I don't think that his eject definitely spells doom and gloom for that entire franchise. I don't think it means it tanks their entire season. I don't think that at all. I think it means that maybe it keeps us in the hunt a little bit longer. Um, who knows? But I do know one thing for sure is he will be on the field December first when we play them. So true. for me, nothing's changed. You know, we've only had one divisional game, and we've actually played a lot of NFC games the last couple weeks here. So you know, or a few weeks, I should say. Um. So yeah, man, I, that's all I have to say about that. I'm sorry to start off the quick hit segments talking about the Kansas City Chiefs. I just want y'all to pump the brakes on that, and I think today was a was a wake up call for some of y'all that this thing ain't in the bag just yet. Just just tread cautiously, man. I do gotta say this, though, okay? And this is only because I have a little bit of experience in dislocating my fucking knee, mm-hmm. but for completely different reasons. <laughs> I was playing basketball. Sex injuries. <laughs> I've come close. I've come close to dislocating a knee. In a couple. Your knee? <laughs> Aha! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I told you to bend at the waist. Listen, honey. man. <laughs> <laughs> Got to stay fluid in the hips. I'm so, sorry. I'm sorry, hun. I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was, blame it on Kenny. <laughs> blame it on me. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, I dislocated my knee playing basketball. And it was just mostly because I was in the air, midair, and I was going sideways. Uh, I tried to go up for a block. Came down. All the pressure was on the outside of my left knee mm-hmm. and it went man and of course i was a little bit older than uh patrick mahomes yeah. is right now yeah. so the recovery is a little different mm-hmm. plus i'm not an nfl player and i don't have millions of dollars and trainers and all these motherfuckers behind me trying to make sure that i i, I heal properly yeah but that shit took me a long time to get back from yeah. I, I i didn't play any sport for that matter for a full fucking year 
um, because of that knee. I'm pretty sure I, I tore the fucking the what's that the LCL on the mm. outside. Mm. Um, but yeah, according to what they're saying, they, they don't feel like there's like super fucking bad damage from it. It yeah. was just dis- dislocated. But when you suffer a, a dislocation like that, and when your knee does a a movement that's not normal, mm-hmm. it goes out that way. It's more likely to do that in the future. So even though they're projecting that he might only be out three weeks, you know, there's a chance that they're going to hold him. He's in. It's going to take a little bit longer, yeah. too, because you want to make sure that and they're going to wrap that. And trust me, he's going to have the fucking the fucking Terminator fucking knee brace on his mm-hmm. goddamn leg, bro, when he comes back, because they're, they're going to try to keep that from happening again. Yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about Terminator. I had to go there. I mean, you know, <laughs> counterpoint, <laughs> counterpoint, he didn't break his arm. This is true. So, you know, I'm just saying, and again, I'm not an apologist for Mahomes, but uh, just pump the brakes on that. There's a lot of work to do. This season ain't over yet. Uh, Game. Blouses. <laughs> I see you, Bobby Wasabi. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Vontae's perfect was suspended perfect for the rest of his life. Perfect. <laughs> Despite perfect and the Raiders brass showing up to appeal the controversial linebacker suspension, the NFL chose to uphold the one year penalty, and Vontae's may have played his last snap in the NFL. Uh, earlier this week, Paul Gunther called the suspension a product of a witch hunt. While it may not be that cut and dry, it would have been good to know that Vontaze was on a one-and-done watch list right. from the jump. Right. Uh, we knew this about Martavis, Br- Martavis Bryant, uh, yeah. although circumstances were indeed different there. Um, the hit was swift. It was quick. It was at an awkward angle. <laughs> but was this worthy of a suspension? Was, <sighs> was, it, was it worth ending a man's career? Now, I would say that the celebration after the fact maybe had more to do with this. It is, but that's a that's a bull. That's 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 some that's that's a bitch way out of it, bro. I'm sorry, like sorry to put it in those terms, but ah, the fans. God damn it! <laughs> I'm god damn believable. <laughs> Man, I post happening. a comment. <laughs> That's a little longer than I expected, bro. That's what she said. That's what- <laughs> right before she blew out her kneecap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we can have a good time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I lost my train of thought. No, listen, listen. Um, the fans in Indy, they were giving it to him on his way out. So to a, to a certain extent, of course, being a Raider fan, you can understand like, yeah, he's giving it back. He's kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk all your shit, all you want. Like, it doesn't bother me one, one, one minute, mm-hmm. right? But the look that that gave to the people who are making decisions after the fact, right? It's like you just you just got kicked out of a game for an illegal hit for something we've ruled out mm-hmm. of the NFL. No more head to head contact. You already have this horrible fucking history. Mm-hmm. And then you're gonna, yeah, I'm just thinking about so that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> the head to head contact. Yeah. Uh, and Jack Doyle, you deserved it, bro. Jack, Jack Doyle needs to get punched <laughs> in the face. <laughs> you deserve it with that name, Jack Doyle. Okay. But listen, that's besides the fact. <laughs> that's besides the point. Okay. Him going out of the stadium that way, it made everybody that's rules over fucking the NFL mm-hmm. look at it differently. I really do believe it. That's all you heard from all, from all the people that were basically on the side of like he deserves to be suspended yeah. for the whole season. That's the fucking point that they made. Him fucking blowing kisses or whatever to the fans on the way out of the stadium. That tell that that's what their number one point in every fucking news show, ESPN, Fox One, whatever it was that you were watching and they were talking about it. Whoever was on the side of fucking kick him out of football for forever mm-hmm. was pointing to that very same thing. Yeah. And those are the same motherfuckers that, you know, they go and they whisper and they talk to all the other other people that are making decisions. So that's that's what happened, man. That's what happened. They use that as a reason. I don't think that that's reason enough. I don't think that that's even it, I don't even think it has anything to do with what 
why you kicked them out of the game in the first place. Mm-hmm. Okay? Him walking out of the stadium, getting booed and fucking, you know, the fans coming down on him and him fucking having that reaction to them has nothing to do with the play itself. Mm-hmm. You should not be ruling a guy's suspension based off his actions after the play. It should be about the play and only about the play. Mm-hmm. That's it. So, yeah. we're Raider fans. Okay? Yeah. We're going to side with our guy as much as we can. Um, not always, right? Yeah. But we're going to side with our guy as much as we can. And that's what everyone's going to say. You, well, you guys are Raider fans. Of course, you're going to see it like that. Yeah. Now I'll give I, you guys a big fuck you. I am sorry to bring. I know for some <laughs> of y'all, they, they, most of y'all, everybody listening, this is, this is older news. But we're, we, I mean, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about this. We did miss last week. So we, we needed to bring that up. And a bit of irony, it was, it was John Runyon, vice president of football operations, who wrote a letter to Burfitt explaining the decision. John Runyon. Gave your grandma CTE. <laughs> okay? He wrote the letter. Uh, there were no mitigating circumstances on this play. Your contact was unnecessary, flagrant, and should have been avoided. For your actions, I'm going to cancel your whole career. That's what he said. <laughs> I'm just summarizing. I'm not going to read that whole paragraph. It's in italics, and that makes me dizzy. Um <laughs> I and mean, then Derek Brooks, Derek Brooks, you know, passed the final judgment. Who gave Derek Brooks and John Runyon the gavel? That's what I want to know. That person yeah. has CTE, dog. I don't and, know. And you know what? They they were feeling more hopeful when they when they heard that rule was the the final ruling was going to be given by De- Derek Brooks, right? Because they're like former linebacker. He's going to have our side. You know, John Runyon. He's an offensive lineman. Of course, he would see the side of the offensive player. Nope. Nope. It's, it's still the NFL versus the Raiders, bro. It's Derek. Still Raiders versus all. Derek Brooks always said, will be. Derek Brooks said, "I'm going to intercept you guys one more oh, time." Oh, fuck that guy! One more time. God damn it! God damn it! <laughs> Raiders right tackle Trent Brown missed the game with an injury today, but he is in jeopardy of missing more than one game after being accused by the mother of his son of domestic violence. Mm. Uh, a lot to unpack here. We're not going to get into all of it. This is not a political show, and I don't want to give you my opinions. This is a dangerous territory uh, in the era that we live in. Hit me up at the tailgate. We could talk about this, but we do want to say a little bit about it. It is the news. Uh, the lawsuit filed Monday in civil court accuses Brown of slapping, choking, and punching the plaintiff, plaintiff his ex-girlfriend, who is now living in Atlanta. Then in instances across at least three months this spring and summer, as well as an assault in 2018. Police were called after a June incident in Texas, according to the lawsuit, and filed a report, though it is not clear yet if Brown faces charges. Uh, Trent denied the allegations on Wednesday when he posted the following from his Twitter profile. I'm aware that my ex-girlfriend has filed a silver suit against me. Brown tweeted, I deny the claims. They are false. Uh, I believe in the court system where I, uh, where I will be- uh, clear my name. I will not be making any further comment at this time. Uh, you can draw your own conclusions on this. We looked long and hard at some of the photos that were posted. Um, uh, this is all I'm going to say about this. And, and again, innocent until pr- till proven guilty. We went through this same thing with Gary and Conley when we drafted him. Mm-hmm. And his name was cleared. So I'm, I'm hoping for the best for Trent. Because A, that means Trent's still on the squad, and B, most importantly, that means hopefully, if if this whole thing is working, that nobody really got hurt, right? Uh, and that includes Trent Brown. If this this lady really is indeed just after his cash, but right. you know, if not, this really happened. You know, punch the dude. Yeah, of course, man. I'm not my, my my allegiance to my team only goes so far. It is what it is. But take a good long heart at those look at those photographs, and you tell me how the bruise is on her arm and the bedroom wall at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Look at the photographs. Hey. You can... Uh, yeah, look at the facts, man. Just look at the facts, bro. Yeah, look at the facts. Um, I don't know. That's controversial, I know. But just take a look at it. I just, it was a head scratcher for me. Maybe I'm just looking at the photo wrong. Maybe it's just some digital compression or some bullshit. And, you know, maybe you really did this. If, if that's a fact and it all washes out in court, hey, man, it is what it is. Uh, but Trent Brown, uh, hopefully, hopefully you clear your name if this is false because I hate to see a person get taken down. Um, I've been in a similar situation before where some just shit came out of left field, completely made up, and mm. and uh, I, I don't make an NFL salary, so you yeah. connect the dots. I don't know. Right. Um, but thank God my name was cleared because at a very, very young age, my, my life could have taken a very bad turn. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's what this is. And again, if it's not, hey, hey let, let, let the justice system take care of it. Um, but that's, that's, I mean, that's all I got to say about that. Hey man, I, I don't have a whole lot to, to add to that. Um, for me, it's wait and see, man. Like 
I'm not the type of person that's going to jump on whether he's a Raider or not. And that goes for all the other the other people that have uh, been accused and and so forth. Like we, you got to wait and see, man. It, yeah. it, you can't you can't jump to a conclusion just because somebody accused a player of something that and he's not on your team. If you're jumping on him and starting to call him like he's this, he's that, the other, right? Antonio Brown's an example. Mm-hmm. Antonio Brown's not not a, a, a Raider anymore. Okay, we have every reason to hate that guy's guts, but I haven't seen him proven guilty. So I'm not going to assume that he's guilty of doing what he's being accused of, right? We're salty for the right reasons Mm -hmm. because of what he did with our team. Coming to this team and and not really being bought into this team, not really being here for the right reasons. That's what I I don't like about Mm AB. Yeah, I'm not calling him a woman beater. No, I'm not calling him nothing, an abuser, nothing like that. Okay, my my neighbor, bro. Oh, oh, (laughs) I know. That's that's where it came from, bro. That's where it came from, bro. Uh, Yeah, that's where it came from, bro. (laughs) Woman beater. Uh, uh, go go ahead and uh, do a YouTube search. Uh, Ruben Grow, woman beater. And you know what? Ruben was right, man. Ruben was, he was facts, right, man. It, those are facts, bro. Yeah. Those were facts. I mean, these, there's that was proven. Hey, yo, I that know the Gre- I know the Grow was listening to the show, so don't get it twisted. I'm not throwing salt in your family's game. Hell no. When uh, he was when, kicking facts, bro. When, Nobody when, liked it. Nobody yeah. liked it. When Bob said that in the press room, I jumped off my couch and was oh. pumping my fist. I was like, <laughs> yeah, get. <laughs> yeah anyways yeah. It, dangerous territory to, for, for us to be talking about any of yes. this but yeah. gotta hear both sides let's see let's hear how it plays out let's just hope for the best nobody got hurt and trent clears his name and that's yeah. that yeah. <laughs> raider signed tight end darren waller to a multi-year contract extension worth a reported nine million dollars per year waller had this to say about the reward he said it's incredible to me it's hard for me in my mind to think what I'll be like in 2024, but I just try to let the day stack and it'll handle itself. It means a lot to me that they would do that. It's, uh, I don't want to say disbelief, but it's just still surreal to me. I remember last year sitting in that same room, signing my contract, coming from Baltimore. I just didn't want to mess this up. So now I have something in place uh, that's incredible. Uh, he went on to say, I feel like it just shows that I can contribute to the team and just be someone that's reliable. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't the case before, so I just take pride in doing that and everything else happened. But the results take care of itself, but I just try to be a good teammate first and foremost and be a part of the family. That's what it's all about for me. No cap. But these sound like the words of a guy that's in therapy. Yeah. And they really do. As someone that works in that field, uh, lightweight, not necessarily addiction, but but folks trying to make changes. This sounds like someone that's getting really good advice, that's following it and has a brand new mantra for themselves. He's saying all the right things. I love that humble attitude. And if you, you saw Waller on Hard Knocks, if you just watch him closely on the sideline, if you listen to his press conferences, you know this is not an act. Darren Waller is definitely in that humble mode at this point. So I know the nation was excited when they saw this news. We're very excited about this. Darren Waller is a threat. He is a weapon for some time to come. Uh, just keep stacking them days, dog. As, as a person that struggled with addiction himself, I know what that's like. I, I still get cravings every single week. And it's a battle, man. It's a battle. You will always be an addict, Darren, uh, but you will always be a winner every day that you do not succumb to that addiction. So we appreciate that. And uh, I don't know who it was, but I, I did see a Raider Nation gave him a Raider sobriety yeah, token. Yeah. Uh, shout out to that dude, man. Yeah, that was badass. Though. That's a cool ass token, bro. Yeah. And that that is super heartfelt. That is really cool. Really cool. Now I'm not sober. <laughs> Uh, but I have kicked that that habit. Now I won't go into it here. But if you've listened to Crow's Nest, you, you already kind of know yeah. a little something yeah. about that. We need to get that show back on the air, dog. I miss. The Crow's I know. Nest. I miss the Crow's Nest too, though. Yeah. We need to do that. We might have to do a little spontaneous one. <laughs> Well, spontaneous one, <laughs> but every day, every day for Waller is is a, is a big victory for him and this team. He absolutely, is, it's awesome to have him uh, be a part of this family. He's just the right dude. And uh, hey, on a football related note. The fuck is Jerry Cook doing this season? Oh man! Well, he's injured. First of all, he's injured. No he's cap. Injured. We like Jerry Cook, but man, yeah. this. It, I mean, wait. Hey, listen. So first of all, he he wasn't. He's definitely not performing like Waller. First, okay, that goes without without question. He lost his starting quarterback in Drew Brees, so mm-hmm. that kind of hurts him, right? 
He's got Teddy Bridgewater out there. It was not a bad backup. Mm-hmm. He's putting it together. Beat the Bears today, right? They beat the Bears today. Yeah. Um, Teddy Bridgewater, baby. But he got injured, so he's out now. So um, a lot of people were scratching their head when we let Cook go. I, you know, it was kind of kind of one of those things where like, damn, man, we're going to let Cook go. He's, he just led our team in receptions and receiving yards. He was the weapon that we had, right? Um, but there was something inside of me even early on, bro. When 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 um when we let him go, and Gruden started to kind of mention Waller, right? They weren't like they weren't like, oh, Waller is fucking amazing yet. But they're just kind of like, oh, we got Darren Waller. He's a like, good athletic we, guy. We, we got this kid, Darren Waller. There you go. We there think really highly of yeah. And by the end of the preseason, it was like Darren Waller is a weapon. Yeah. Right. And even then, we still were kind of like, well, we haven't seen it yet. And then the video started leaking from practice, and you're like, okay, all right, this might be something. I started to get really good feeling about this guy, man. And and then when you heard his story and where he's coming from, you realize, like, the only person that's been in his way is himself. And he's finally bought into himself. And he talks about renewing, basically, a love for himself, Mm -hmm. right? Once he started doing that, all the good started coming his way, man. And this, Love it. he follows up getting this new contract extension, putting up over a hundred yards in his first TD of the season, bro. Bam! Two, two TDs, bam, right? in in of the you know in his first of the season with that first one. So perfect way to start off perfect. this new contract, bro. Right, and I don't see an end to it, dog. This nah. dude is a beast, bro. Beastie. You see, even that catch that he didn't, he should have gone house on, and he just got fucking hit on the back of the ankle back of the ankle yeah that catch was thrown on the on the back shoulder back side yeah he had to turn all the way around caught that fully extended and didn't even break stride bro he like spinned around and just kept 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 it moving dog yeah full speed so this dude is this dude is an athlete bro and i think he's always he always was that right i think coming into the league when baltimore drafted him they drafted him for the very same reasons they saw a fucking amazing athlete yeah and if he could translate what he was doing for Georgia Tech, I believe it was he was playing for, uh, to the NFL, he was going to be great with the height, the speed, and all that going for him. Didn't work out for Baltimore, but hey, hey, hey. we're the beneficiaries of that, bro. And Love I'm it. fucking thankful for that because Darren it. Waller, bro, I'm going to get your jersey here pretty soon, bro. Mm. You keep playing like that. You keep uh, balling out, dog. Waller, Waller, Waller. Uh, I love seeing players playing for more than just a W, man. Playing for for something inside yourself yeah. that's meaningful is yeah. always going to draw the best out of anybody. So I love that, man. Shout out to you, Darren Waller. Uh, b- big heart emoji here from the Pillaging Podcast. <laughs> Gabe Jackson returned to the offensive line for the that's first right. time this season, and he was angry. He was mad. He was angry. Bro. Big mad. Uh, Raider Nation not happy with the outcome, but feeling good that this line should be back to full health. As early as next week against Houston, uh, barring any, you know, basically legal issues at this point, I yeah. think Trent Brown will be ready to go. I, I think Trent is definitely. I think Trent would have gone if he if it wasn't for that, right? I, I think sitting Brown today was more of a long haul situation. It yeah. was more of a big picture thing. He had the walk through on Friday. I think they were just like, you know what, this is this. Is, this is a 50-50 game. Right. I don't think any organization is outwardly going to say like, oh, we don't know if we're going to win this week. Mm. But I mean, you're going into Green Bay. Um, you know, you're playing at Lambeau. You're starting right tackle, highest paid lineman in the league. He's a little bit iffy. Is it worth it? Mm. You know, I think it's you know game time. He'd probably be a little stiff, not quite there yet. But if you're in the hunt and it's later in the season and you're playing a a, 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 a divisional opponent, Trent Brown starts today. Yeah, you know I, feel what I, mean? I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, shout out to Gabe Jackson. Stay healthy, man. We need you, bro. We need you. Yeah. Finally, 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 finally. Let's get into some current events here. Uh, the Raiders lose one on the road, falling to Green Bay at Lambeau. Lambeau Field, uh, 24 to 42. Let's get into the numbers. All right. Fact. fact. The Chargers lost today. That's a fact. That's a fact. Those are facts. Those are motherfucking facts. Fact. Fact. Uh, coming in today's game, Aaron Rodgers have been averaging 265 yards per game. Um, not the greatest for Aaron Rodgers. 
But today he completed 25 of 31 passes for 429 yeah. yards, five touchdowns, yeah. and finished with a perfect 158.3 perfect. passer rating. Mm. Um, and keep in mind, too, the, Char- I mean, the Chargers, the Packers... They've played two divisional opponents already. Yeah. Two, right? They played the Bears. They've they beat the Bears. Excuse the me. Opening game of the season, man. Right? They beat the Lions with a little help from their friends. Yeah. And I don't think they played Minnesota yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, I don't think so. So, um, I don't even know why I bring that up. I was going to say that that tempers is his numbers a little bit. Divisional opponents are going to do that to you, but uh, anyway, that's the stat line for Aaron Rodgers, but. This is Derek Carr's fault, right? Oh, right. Here we go. Carr was 22 of 28 for, uh, was it 293 yards? Yes. Two touchdowns, one interception, one fumble. Mm. Carr finished with a 119 rating and a higher average than we've seen in a while at at 10.5 yards per completion. They, Mm -hmm. They were stretching the field a little bit today. Yeah. Uh, with no starting wide receivers, mind you, um, but this this is Derek Derek Carr's fault, right? Fact. 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 Uh, leading receiver today was no surprise Darren Waller, who finished with seven catches for 126 yards, and was it two touchdowns? Two touchdowns. Yeah. Two times. Two times. Two times. Uh, yeah. Carr's fumble certainly a momentum changer, yeah. and what appeared to be a competitive game in the first half. So much so that the Raiders were trailing by 18 points. When they got the ball back after two more Green Bay drives that ended in touchdowns, uh, two mistakes equals 18 points. Two mistakes, 18 points. Touchdowns are worth six, eight at the moment. That's 16. Yeah, there's no pick six. Something's not adding up, dog. <laughs> and uh, we were critical of Carr not but a few weeks ago, and we will continue to call him out. We are not Carr apologists. Carr is our guy. He is our franchise QB. Uh, it is not the neck. We will stand by him as much as we can. We think Derek Carr is the best talent we've had in a long time. That is that is a fact. Yeah. Uh, but Derek Carr is not without his criticisms or concerns or his weaknesses or his flaws. We've pointed those out ad nauseum on the show. We're not going to rehash all that. We will dive into kind of what happened here in a little bit. We're saving some of that for Kane. Um, th- this is not all Carr's fault. You gave up a ball. Derek Carr gave up the ball. Now, now this fumble, okay, yeah, it's, <laughs> it was some bullshit, man. Yeah. It was on second down at the end of a half when you're down by four points. Now, I dragged him pretty hard after last year's game the against game. the Cowboys. Yeah. 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 We're – you know, arguably the same exact thing happened, right? That's making me kind of pull back my take from last year. This one, and I'm being critical here. You know, that one was game was on the line. It's prime time. Yeah. You know, you, you're not in the hunt, but you're you're playing for some dignity at yeah. that point, right? Um, and, and this game, you know, you're in the hunt. It's second down. You could have just walked it out of bounds, giving Jacobs a shot on third and, and taking a field goal and being down by one and going to the yeah. half. Yeah. Hope your defense come out and make a stand. No, nope. instead, you fumble the ball. But here's my issue. You got less, you, you would just, I think, just over a minute or maybe just under a minute left to play. And your defense allows them to go 99 yards and score a fucking touchdown immediately after that. A momentum shift. Okay. But is your defense that sad and depressed on the sideline? Or are they like, let's get back in there and get our boys right? Let's put everybody in a good situation. Let's just get the fuck out of here and come back in the third quarter. Let's do that. Right. No, you couldn't do that. And you continue to let it down. I Tell me I'm wrong, but I understand momentum in a game is huge. I get that. But it's a four-point game. And, and you got the entire length of the field to defend. Was it, was it that much of a gut punch, Che, that the momentum completely shifted and took our entire defense out of this game? The defense had nothing to do with that fumble. Right. All right. Now, I mean, look, man, you you make a great point that I think most people are overlooking because – Oh, know, 75 yards, Jen. I'm sorry. It's 75 yards. You're it's, right. Well, it was a touchback, right? It was yeah. a touchback. So. Um. <clears throat> But I think most people are overlooking that just because 
it's what everybody falls back on, man. Whenever shit happens, things go wrong. And especially if it was a car mistake, it's going to be car's fault. Um, and I told you, I'm going to put blame on both. Okay. I think car is to blame. There is a momentum change. There is a factor, right? But the defense still has to play the fucking game. The point that you're making is Aaron Rodgers still fucking went down the field and scored that touchdown. That was on you, defense. And Paul Gunther, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. What's going on, Mm -hmm. right? And maybe this is where we see just how badly affected our team is without having perfect out there. Perfect. You know, Um, because last week against a, a Bears or two weeks ago against a Bears team, who doesn't have an Aaron Rodgers? Mm-hmm. And we and we warned you guys about this, right? They like, didn't even have a Mitch Trubisky. Okay, they didn't have a Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> bro. They had a Chase Daniels. Okay, yeah. we let Chase Daniels back into this game. Chase Daniel. Chase Daniel. Uh, bro, do we need to pronounce his name correctly? He's no. not a fucking Raider. He's, okay? not a Raider. <laughs> He's Chase Daniels. Fuck that guy. He's Dace Chaniel. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, man, Ch- we let that dude back in the game. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. now. He shit all over himself, threw the ball away in the end, and, and, and closed the game out the way we wanted him to, right? Yeah, it was stinky. Okay? Yeah. But Aaron Rodgers wasn't going to do that, and nah. we said that. Look it. Aaron Rodgers is not Chase Daniels. Aaron Rodgers is a Hall of Fame quarterback. He is, man. As Whatever. You, you can't take nothing away from that guy. He has a Super Bowl. He has a Super Bowl victory, mm-hmm. and he is highly touted bro that everybody feels like he is even though he doesn't he's not the owner of six rings as tom brady is people still think that he's a much better quarterback than tom brady tom brady just has happens to be you know the lucky one that ended up in bill belichick's system right aaron Rodgers used mike mccarthy as a cum rag and still got to the playoffs <laughs> I don't know about th- I don't know about those things, bro. That's I don't know. About th- <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's harsh, bro. But listen, <laughs> it's a fact. Listen, um, Aaron Rodgers wasn't gonna wasn't gonna give us this game. He wasn't. We had to go out there and earn this game, and it really came down to the fact where whether or not we were gonna be able to get in this shootout. Stay stay with this shootout. Right, because mm-hmm. that's what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Whoever possessed the ball last, as long as the Raiders didn't make any mistakes, that's who was going to win the game. But we made mistakes, and that's where time of possession, the turnover differential, all that shit matters. And we lost those mm-hmm. because of those because of those turnovers, because of the fucking fumble out of bounds. We got to get points when we are, when we're in the red zone, man. When we when we have the ball, we have to come away with points. The upside to this, and I know that most of us don't want, don't don't have time to look at the upside right now. Mm. We're real, we're really angry about this loss because of how bad the scoreboard says it was. Mm. Right? But we weren't out of this game. We really weren't. We weren't. We really weren't beat by the by by Green Bay. We were beat by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. we punted the ball twice. Mm-hmm. We punted the ball two times. Two today. times. Okay? One time. We had three turnovers. A fumble, turnover on downs, and an interception. Okay? That's 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 what made the difference. That's what made the difference because our defense could not stop this offense. Um so this is what losses are gonna look like, dog. Yeah. Uh, this is what losses are going to look like against a good, solid team. Uh, allow me to kind of massage that take a little bit and just say, it wasn't the turnovers, bro. Two out of those three, they had to drive the length of the field to cash in. No. It was the defense. It was our inability to score in the red zone. That's exactly what I'm that saying, That cost though. us the game. This, this is what I'm saying, is we're so vulnerable because of our defense, the, the inability to stop a decent team, okay? Mm-hmm. If we we match up against a quarterback that that can do the things that Aaron Rodgers does, mm-hmm. this defense is going to get chewed up. You saw him, man. How many long counts? How many hesitant counts that he have where he waited to see what our defense was going to do? Where they're going to reveal the blitz? Where they're going to show him that they're going to fall back in coverage? He waited them out every single time that he went to the fucking line. Those hard counts were nice. Yeah, those today. hard counts. They were nice. Long. He. They, I don't think he quick snapped anything. Mm-mm. Everything was a, a a long count, 
He looked around. He read the defense perfectly, and he cut us up. He cut us up, bro. He surgically ate us, ate our defense up. So a lot of that credit got to go to him too because he's just that good. But defense, you got to get something, man. You got to give us something to get back in the game. Okay, we turned the ball over. So get one back. Cause something. We didn't get no pressure on him. We we had it's outside of that sack. Mm-hmm. I think maybe we had one pressure outside of the sack that Max had. Uh, I think one it was or like, two. It was like three hits. Yeah, three hits, one tackle for loss, and one sack. Yeah. So we the, we the need QB hits. Yeah. You cannot give a guy like Aaron Rodgers that much time. Um, my my point about the turnovers is when you have. A, an opposing offense and an opposing quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, like Green Bay had. They, yeah, they're missing some guys, but they still got weapons, man. Those two running backs that they got back there, they can make plays. Both of them can make fucking plays, okay? Catching the ball out of the backfield and running the ball. And then you got, you know, Graham isn't the same tight end that he was, you know, three, four years ago, but he's still good. Mm-hmm. And we have trouble with tight ends. It doesn't matter who you are. So he, they were gonna. They were moving the ball, man. They were moving the ball. The defense didn't hold up. And when you turn over the ball on offense, and you have a defense that can't can't get that ball back for you, this is what the game looks like. Mm-hmm. This is what it's gonna look like when we match up against elite offenses or defenses. If we have a struggle, or we we lose the ball or we turn the ball over. This is what these losses will look like because this our offense is not a come from behind offense. No. We're not going to win games being down 18, 20 points. That's not going to happen, bro. We're just not built that way. We need to have control of the ball. We need to be in the lead. We have to be within a score, right? Mm-hmm. Can we agree? We have to be within a score even, either behind or ahead to really be that team that's going to fucking come out with the victory. As soon as we fall behind a couple scores, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We, we are. But, um, you know, just kind of a soft counterpoint to that. Today, this offense showed that it is willing and able to make strikes and make the quick play when it needs to. It doesn't all have to be ground and pound ball control. It can happen. And, and, uh, I know some of you guys will, will, will burn me for saying this, but I do admire Carr's ability to, to not get rattled in this game and still have confidence going down the stretch. But you know, there's, a, there's a lot of fingers to point in this game. I don't think Derek Carr is the only one. And y'all are going to crucify him. You know, I'm going to see the headlines tomorrow. You know, Derek Carr did not allow 42 points to the Green Bay Packers. Sure. They put them in a position to score 14 of those points. But the defense did not hold up their end of the deal. So I'm, I'm bothered by the public bloodletting of Carr this week. Sometimes he deserves it. I don't, uh, you know, be critical of his mistakes. He, he made them. My bad. You got to watch out for those, gotta those watch, videos. We're going to watch those pop up videos. Yeah. He made them. I guarantee you. He did not make life easy for Raider fans or the team today. I'll agree with that. But is he the sole reason for this loss? I say absolutely not. Because we told you. We told you two weeks ago, right? Aaron Rodgers is a problem. We beat Chicago's defense with no starting wide receivers. So Aaron Rodgers not having starting wide receivers does not inspire confidence in me because he's a guy that's going to figure out a way to get it done, right? Come on. Fuck you. You're done. (laughs) You're done, son. Uh, We also told you Josh Jacobs would have success against the Green Bay Packers. They give up a lot of yards on the ground. Josh Jacobs did just that, 124 yards. Um, You know, he had the 42-yard long run. Um, We also told you that Green Bay was stingy in the red zone. Now, yeah, it came on their own hand, but on the stat sheet, it still shows up the same, right? Uh, Did not score with multiple trips into the red zone. I did not capitalize on those. So, you know, Raider Nation, a lot of you guys were high off the Kool-Aid after beating Chicago two weeks ago. You know, Chicago was was hobbled going into that game. They were obviously jet-lagged. It's the first international game we've played that truly felt like a home field advantage only because we got there early. I think that had a, a big part of it that we didn't really talk about. Well, we weren't on the air last week. Um, but after the game, you know... It, Again, I think we beat Chicago. I'm not taking anything away from the team. They had to hang in there. They had to play the full four quarters to close that game out. Well, let's call it what it is. A lot of you had us running the table. You know, we come off the Chicago win. Then later in the week, you see Patrick Mahomes go down, and all of a sudden, the Raiders are a juggernaut. We're not a juggernaut. We told you when the season started. I told you about an 8-8, eight and eight, 
And I'm sticking to that. So while all the criticism is flying around this week, just to remind you, nobody on the show said we were going to beat the Packers. Okay, we did not say that. So I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. I am not negative, And I am unfazed. This was supposed to be an L. It was a little l- uglier than I thought. But not too far off from what I thought, to be completely honest with you. We still have a shot to get back in this and finish this season 8-8. Eight and eight. I mean, that's where I had us, you know? Everyone that's putting us in the playoffs after beating Indy and Chicago, you're too early, man. You got to the party too early. You, you know, you got you got to wait until your friends show up to start taking shots. <laughs> I mean, y'all were faded real quick. It wasn't even ten o'clock yet, and you were high on the Kool Aid. Um, you know, so one thing I got to say: some people like to take shots by themselves, man. I'm just saying. Yes, yeah, can't you can't get, can't be mad at those guys, man. I can't. They like shots, bro. Maybe, maybe you need to call somebody. That Don Julio was. I don't know who he was calling him. <laughs> calling your name. Uh, uh, but look, man, I, I thought John called a great game today. Yeah. Um, I thought he mixed it up well. Uh, I liked the route concept. I thought Dyer Carr did a good job <laughs> going through his reads. He went through his progressions today. Slid around in the pocket, made some plays that weren't there originally. You know, I thought all around he, he had a pretty decent game, save for those mistakes. And the defense, yeah. defense just couldn't back him up, man. You have to be, you have to play without the fear of making a mistake. That's been the criticism you guys have had of Carr before. And then when you make some mistake, you got to be able to rely on the other half of your team to get the job done. Couldn't get that done today. So while I will say that Carr's not all to blame today, he does share some blame, but you're all looking, overlooking what the defense did not do today to make it happen. But you're also overlooking the fact that we played a Hall of Fame quarterback on his home turf. So, you know, all of it adds up to a Raiders L today, and it is what it is. Um, you know, three QB hits, one tackle for loss, and one sack. That, that's about the only highlights you got from the defense today. Uh, we saw a Hall of Fame quarterback with the all, uh, all the time in the world, wide open wide receivers. Dare I say Gary and Conley had a worse game than Derek Carr did today. Yeah, I mean. That won't be said by anybody else. I, I can't argue that. Right? I can't argue that, man. That's not even a hot take. That's just it, it is what it is. And on top of that, penalties, which for the most part we, we were able to overcome. You know, Trent Brown was missed. David Sharp. <laughs> And we and look. I was blowing up your phone with those fucking holding penalties, bro. But we overcame the holding penalties. That was the shocker, right? Because we did. We did. Because usually in those in those scenarios, that's that kills our drive. That that ends our drive, and and we end up going three and out, and then we punt the ball away. We actually came away with some points because we were able to overcome two holding penalties on Sharp. And Sharp, what the fuck are you doing, dog? That like, second one was unnecessary, this, completely unnecessary. Bro, so bad. Your technique is so bad, bro. I'm not an NFL player by any means, dog. Mm-hmm. But listen, where the fuck are your hands, dog? Where are your hands? You're sitting back. You're catching defenders in your chest. And then you're fucking <laughs> grabbing them around the shoulders, bro. You're holding them. Yeah, they're going to throw the fucking flag on you, dog. And you're probably going to be fucking falling back on your heels because you're catching motherfuckers with your chest. Get your hands out, bro. Get your hands out. Where's the punch, dog? That's part of your technique you should be learning. Where is it, dog? Where is it? I don't see it at all. You're a big motherfucker. You have no excuse, dog. Get those goddamn arms out. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, And it is what it is, man. I mean, some of our biggest plays call back because of holding. So, you know, I think the team or defense didn't show up today. I thought the offense did a decent job, to, to be honest with you, all things considered. Uh, the chip stacked against them. You know, we were competitive, but, you know, to, to a point, and then the floodgates open wide up. So we'll see. We got another game next week against the Texans, another formidable opponent, another one on the road before we come back for a spell. So hang in there, Raider Nation, and, and Silver and Black, you guys are in for a fight next week. Yeah. But just ain't over. Nah. Nah. No. Not at all. Over. Not at all, dog. Still three and three, bro. Mm-hmm. We're still there. I like it. We're still there. Hopping. <laughs> injury update. Uh, Josh Jacobs left the game briefly yeah. with a shoulder injury, but returned shortly afterwards and showed little to no effect from the injury. So thank God. Thank God. And uh, to add to that, your boy Washington came in and didn't do a bad job, dog. No. Your boy Washington came in. He held his own, too. So even though Jacobs was out, we were all worried, concerned. Mm-hmm. Boy, Washington came through, and he he kept the the movement, man. He kept, kept it going, going, bro. And you know you know how we feel about Washington, man. Yeah. 
Uh, Trent Brown missed the game, still nursing a quad injury. While Trent participated in walkthrough on Friday, it wasn't enough to get him on the field Sunday. Barring any legal issues, Trent should return next week. Uh, also, Raiders wide receiver Trent Williams still out with a foot injury. Uh, it was disclosed this week that Williams is dealing with plantar fasciitis. This is not an extremely serious injury, by all means, but it is painful, nagging injury that could linger for some time. If you guys get what I'm saying, this is not a bone break, but it is something that just hangs on like a groin injury. Uh, best remedy is is to rest and, and stay off the injured foot. I mean, it, this is something I suffered from when, uh, when I was running. Uh, it happens, man, and, and the doctor's going to tell you there's nothing you can do. You just need to sit down and put that foot up and just stay off of it and wait. Yeah. And just yeah. wait. You got to be patient. Uh, so his return is yet to be decided. It could be a while. So be patient on Trent Williams. Uh, it is Tyrell. Tyrell. Did I say Trent? Yeah. I said Trent Williams. Uh, you got Trent on the mind, bro. Uh, yes. Mind. We need him back, though. Yeah. <laughs> we need him back. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I guess while we're here, I'll jump ahead a little bit. All right. Uh, Will, uh, Will Fuller went out of the Houston game today. Um, I believe that was a hamstring. Yeah, hamstring injury. So with hamstrings, we, we won't know for a day or two whether he's going to play next week or not. It could be serious. could be completely just a pull uh, that, that bounces back in a couple days. Um, so that we don't know. And I believe they also lost a defender. Uh, their corner went out today, too. Where am I looking at? Um, I'm not looking at it. Oh, yeah, Philip Gaines. Uh, Gaines went out today, too. So uh, they're in one of their corners. So we'll see. We'll see. Houston's a little banged up, too, right now. But, hey, man, it's that time of year, right? Injuries happen. It's contact sport. Yeah. It's yeah. contact sport. And you never want to, like, base. Again, this kind of goes back to the very first quick hit. Never base your outcome or outlook on, a, on an upcoming game based on the other team's injury report. You know, we've seen this team overcome injury. Uh, we saw it last year. We beat the New York Giants without a single wide receiver, bro. Yeah. Was that last year? I don't know. Or was the year before that. that? I don't remember it all. Uh, I'm trying to put last year be you know out of my mind, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it happened. It was we, a bad year, dog. Hell, this year we beat the, <laughs> we beat the Chicago Bears with, with no wide receiver. So there's weapons on this offense, you know. And, and, and again, the same thing with Houston. As long as Deshaun Watson is taking snaps, that he's a threat. And we'll we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, I'll share my thoughts on Deshaun Watson. Uh, I think it's time to take a break. Yeah, we got to go get this other chela too. We got to get this other chela. And when we come back, uh, we'll have Kane's Corner and we'll break down the, the upcoming game against Houston Texans. And of course, take your phone calls. But in the meantime, stay chill. And we'll see you on the other side. Peace. Yo, you like to spend money? You like to make money? You like to bet on these games on all you fantasy football heads out there? Look, at the end of a hard week, it's great to sit down, take some time off, and watch football. Game-winning touchdowns, two-minute drives, fumbles at the goal line, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing else like the NFL, and there's no better way to make games even more exciting than to bet your money on them games. So do the smart thing and go to mybookie.ag. No one gives you more ways to win than they do. My bookie's got the fastest payouts and even better lines. Really good lines. Nice lines. Convenient lines. Friendly lines. Go to mybookie.ag. Don't forget, because where you're betting is just as important as who you're betting on. The best lines and the quickest payouts. Look. If you took Green Bay and you gave up five points, huh, you weren't sweating. You were sad on the inside, but you'll be at the bank tomorrow. Uh, Baltimore versus Seattle. You had the uh, Earl Thomas revenge game. Yeah, They were giving Baltimore three points. Well, they, they didn't need them three points. So if you took Baltimore in that game, that was an upset game, dare I say, on the road in Seattle against the number one quarterback in football. But you're a gambling man. You like to live risky. You like to be on the edge. Yeah. And you made money today if you took Baltimore. And right now, I know Philadelphia and Dallas is going down. Philly was getting two and a half points. They thought that game was going to be a lot closer than it is and it was at the half. Where's that game at right now? I don't know. I don't know. Well, we came up. It was 14-7 still. I think it was 14-7. Uh, 37 to 10. Whew. Yeah. So it's a route now. You're feeling good if you took the home team there, which you should have done. 
When in doubt, let's hit the home team. Look, I wouldn't be telling you guys to bet with them if they weren't the best. MyBookie.ag is the best. That's why you hear them on every single podcast that you listen to out there. MyBookie, they're juggernauts. You can bet on MyBookie. Actually, you can't. There's actually some cool prop bets. And then there's a prop bet for the Super Bowl, whether or not Mark Antony will take the stage. <laughs> and that's not a joke. That's really a prop bet. So maybe you like Wait, to Wait, who's the performance? Who's listed as the performance? Uh, J-Lo and Shakira. Why would... Mark Anthony's not not with J-Lo no more. Yeah, I know. So why would he show up? Yes. I'm going to take, take that bet. You take that bet. Oh, maybe he phoned me. <laughs> Watch he shows up, though, right? <laughs> I'll take that bet, man. <laughs> I'm going to take that bet. Uh, look, if you're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and <laughs> win, a, win a lot, try a parlay. Uh, if all your picks come through, uh, you could donate all that cash to the Billy Jean Podcast. Uh, no, nah, I'm just playing. Um, but yeah, join now. My bookie will double your first deposit by using the promo code Pillaging. That's all caps Pillaging. P I L L A G I N G to activate the offer. That's promo code Pillaging. Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, get paid. Cash money. You got it. Yeah. All right. We'll pay some bills and hopefully. Um, but let's get back into this. Uh, you know, it's Suffer Fest continues, but we're going to take a bit of a, a fork in the road here. Chase going to go left. I'm going to go right. we got two beers for you, courtesy of your man, Bobby Wasabi4080 on Twitter. Yeah, 4080. 4080. Follow him. Real quick, man, real quick, because I just saw this pop up in the chat. Mm. just want to give a quick shout out to my boy, Sentinel. That's my homie from SD. Oh, shit. Uh, what's good, dog? It's good to see you. Good to see you up in the chat, man. Thanks for fucking tuning in, dog. That's my fam right there. That's my fam. Mm. Sentinel Six. That, that's the same fucking. <laughs> that's the same fucking name he used when we were playing fucking Halo, dog. Oh damn. <laughs> damn. We had some good Halo wars, bro, back mm. in college days. That was dog. your AOL instrument message <laughs> chat name. Uh, I was too poppy, man. That was that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, that you was, were. That was my name, dog. <laughs> Halo, bro. I was the worst fucking Halo player out of all of us. But my, my I was, was too uh, poppy, dog. Mine was bend at the hips. <laughs> um, you ready for this though? Let's let's crack you, this chat. Crack yours. I'll crack mine. Ah, uh, there's, yeah. there's one. There's one. All right. Let's see. We we got this sud work. Okay. This is a a, a fruit beer. Okay. It's from Davis, California, and this is the Funhouse Tropical. All right, let me give you a rundown of the flavors before I even get 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 into this. It's a sour beer, brewed with pink guava and passion fruit. Uh, you know, this is a nice little sixteen ounce pint, and it's a four point five by volume, bro. Here we go. As I spill some all over myself. Yeah, yeah. Do it, bro. Shower yourself. Chase gone wild. Chase gone, Chase gone wild. See them tits, bro. <laughs> you ain't you just throw no beads at me, dog. You, you can put nipples on the chest, no, bro. Like I, I, said I, last see, episode, I don't see no fucking beads, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's it taste like? It's there, man. It's it's nice. It's a nice fruit fruity beer, bro. It's got that. It's got that guava. You definitely taste that guava up front and that passion fruit on the back end. I like it. Nice. It's nice, smooth. Smooth. Good looking out, Bobby. Good looking out, dog. So, chela numero tres. Oh, that was a good crack. This is the Pineapple Jardin. It's another local brewery uh, out of Berkeley, California. This is the Gilman Brewing Company. Not related to Kimmy Gilman, for all of you that know me in my personal life. <laughs> Let's keep her out of here. Um, 6% alcohol by volume. This is a pineapple sour. Two of my favorite things in one beer. I love pineapple. Um, a lot of medical benefits to pineapple. Your girl will appreciate. And uh, <laughs> I love sour beers, man. This one's to you, you sour ass Raider fans. <laughs> there you go. Right hey, there. we're keeping it's we're keep, we're staying with the theme, okay? Yeah, I'm keeping it above. Right? From the <laughs> from the suffer fest to the sour beer, okay? Mm. Staying with the theme today. Mm. That is um. Pineapple from the from the start to the back, Bobby. Thank you. I know you can't have one right now because you're on the bike, but I'm assuming you've enjoyed one of these already. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, go. you did. There you go. Bobby. B- Bobby's got the hookup on um, the beers because you haven't brought us a dud yet. 
And everything you brought us, I haven't seen before. And it's all delicious, man. Where's that spot that they should be at? Beer Mule. Beer Mule. The Beer Mule in Watsonville. Shout out. Watson. Watson. Las Fresas in the building. <laughs> you know what it is? Shout out, Driscoll's. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Driscoll's, man. Um, this is really good. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It is pretty straightforward. It is a pineapple sour. Um, the sour note is not too harsh. So if those of you that are kind of like a little tentative on sours or maybe out on sours, but you like pineapple, give this one a shot. The sour will not blow up your palate, but the pineapple really smooths it out. Uh, I love pineapple, man. Pineapple is fucking good. Call me Square Bob Sponge Pants on this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drink so many of these. I'm gonna need some sponge pants. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I gotta use some of those sponge pants <laughs> while I was trying to drink this beer earlier, bro. Hey, if it doesn't get all over your face, <laughs> it doesn't belong in the place or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, bro. God damn. Ooh, it's good times, man. It's yeah. good times over here. We're deep right now. We're deep in yeah. it right now. There's no turning back. <laughs> Uh, let's 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 call yeah. let's call Kaner right now. Let's, let's um, hit him up, though. Hit here, him up. Hold on one second. Give me a minute. Give me a minute here because I got to get this this phone number worked oh, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holler at him, Shay. Yeah, yeah. I'm over here. I'm looking at I'm looking at the chat. My my boy though was was talking about uh he's he's asking where the Chuck Ross and the Tampico went, and I was like, bro, I, I ain't broke no more. I know broke college student no more. Dog. <laughs> We lived off of that Chuck Ross, man. That full jug of Chuck Ross back in the days. Carlos Rossi, bro. It was all bad, dog. Top of the line wine. It was Carlos all Rossi. bad. That was our mixer, dog. It's Carlo Rossi, too. That, I always, yeah, call, him Car- Car- I always Carlo. call him Carlos. Like it's Carlos. Like he's from. Yeah, we, like, we, we did, too. Like, like he's, he's from, from the neighborhood. That Carlos Rossi or <laughs> that Chuck Ross, dog. That Chuck Ross. Chuck Ross. But that was our mixer, bro. Uh, we would go get a handle of Bacardi or some other random cheap liquor mm. and and we would run out of mixer it was usually like harrito mm. harrito something that we were mixing to that <laughs> we ran out of that we started that jug of wine here's a true story that was going uh, in carlo, was going in dog carlo rossi a fine purveyor of uh, malted wine beverages yeah almost yeah. went out of business in the late 90s and then college uh, students kept them in business and then i met, <laughs> and then I met the gent and when I met Gent, we doubled their sales volume. There you go. Uh, Gent was already, already doing his part, and I fell in love with the rhyme. I fell in love with the rhyme. <laughs> and it was a wrap. Uh, maybe we should just drink a handle of, of Rossi. Oh, man. If we make the playoffs. We got we to gotta put everything else on hold, bro, if we can do that. Let me just say that, okay? Are we drinking a handle of Chuck Ross, that jug. It's... Yeah, I might you know, to, everything else better be on hold, man. Life better be on hold after that. I'm gonna have to knock on Ruben's door and be like, "Yo, don't call the cops tonight." It might, get a little, <laughs> might get a little wild next door. Yeah, you gotta give everybody a heads up, man. This is a one time event. Just give it this. Give us this one. <laughs> you might not see me for a day or two. <laughs> Just give you a heads up. Yeah. All right, let's give Kane a call right now. Do it. Do it. We'll call him up. Let's see what's cracking. We got a lot to talk about. Oh, by the way, let me show you the shirt. Yeah, show that shirt off, though. Get a better look at it. There you go. There you go. It's fire. It's fire. It's fire. Let's see if Kane picks up here. One ringy dingy. Yeah. Two ringy dingies. Come on, Kane. I saw you. Please in the leave chat, your dog. message. I saw Ooh. you in the chat, dog. So I'm on the chat. He said he needed to charge his phone, bro. It's Uh-oh. game day, Uh-oh. bro. That, that, that phone should be charged. Should have been charged, dog. Been Come charged. on, dog. We're going to get into this right now. We, we got a few questions. We definitely need to hear the, the, the MVP and the trash can player. But I got some follow-up questions. We're going to revisit some points. We're going to okay. get Kane's takes on him because I know some of y'all think, you know, Kenny, he's just a big rolling ball of butcher knives. That dude is <laughs> <it's> always... <laughs> I mean, if you if you know Kenny, he's he's a big fan of horror flicks. I am. He's a big fan of uh, machetes and whatnot. So that makes sense. I mean, that's a good description. That's I got a, good a description. I got a machete under my couch. There you go. <laughs> you got him under there, bro. Come mm-hmm. on, dog. Yeah. That's my home dog. That's my homeboy, bro. You can't be hiding machete <laughs> under the couch, bro. 
That dude, that dude's a G, bro. Hey, doesn't he have a taco shop too? I don't know. Doesn't he have a taco shop too? He does, right? I gotta go hit that up. Though. I just saw him in the new Rob Zombie flick. He's through, a badass. Free from hell. Dude. I love that guy. Man, he didn't last long. I was, I, <laughs> I was disappointed. That whole movie was garbage. Rob Zombie, you need to stop making movies <laughs> and music. <laughs> Doesn't he have enough money to just retire already? Yeah. So do like Ted Nugent, bro. Go into the wilderness and be be happy. <laughs> I don't know. All right, I want to call this number one more time, and if, if, if he's not there, we may have to go to the bullpen. All right. Hey. Your yeah. boy Gent is in the chat. He, is he in the chat? He was in the chat. He was in the chat. He was in the chat. I don't though. know. He might be... Uh, I might be drinking his tears away. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I can't say I blame him either. I'll be dodging my phone call too right now. Hello. Hey, there, there he is. Go. What's up, Kane? Oh. The third time on? is a charm, dog. Um, bro, you got to have that phone charged and ready, dog. We are live. Yeah, I'm ready to go. On the air. All right, let's get into it, man. First off, let's just get this out of the way. I need your MVP player for today. I know it's a big loss, 42-24, to 24, but somebody... Shine bright today, but I'd say a, ham, a small handful of folks shine bright today. Hell who, yeah! Who are you going to give it to, King? Um, I'm going to give it to Josh Jacobs, a hundred yards, a rushing hundred yards rushing, still looking good, even though he was kind of nicked up. I, uh, you know, after that, I guess he had a shoulder injury or whatever. He was nicked, played nicked up. He still got a hundred yards, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, between him and Darren Waller, you know, you could, you could, you could, you could uh, split that in two. And give it to both of them, but for the, but you know, let's give for the let's most do part, that. Let's do that. Let's call MVPs Darren Waller, hell yeah. and Josh Jacobs. Without, without question, without question, without question. That's yeah. good. That's solid. Trash can player Reggie. Yeah, I was Mel- gonna say Darren Waller scores if Derek Carr pl- puts that ball yes over his shoulders. Yeah, yeah. And then you know the, what I mean. Yeah, and then he, the fumble never happens, right? And then the fumble never happens, right? Mm. Was that that same drive? Right. Yeah, that yeah. was it. That was it. Yeah. So. That was the one we talked about. Waller coming back. That was on the on the back shoulder. He had to turn all the way around, reach out, catch him. He still kept he still kept the speed though, man. He still caught that shit in stride and and just kept it moving, man. That mm-hmm. was impressive. That was an impressive catch. A lot of people don't understand how hard that how difficult that catch is, man. For him to turn the complete opposite way Damn. and reach out here, catch the ball out here. He's striding. Striding. Those, striding those hands, too. bro. Those hands, bro. Yeah. Waller's hands are no joke, dog. Striding. Yep. The whole time. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the Reggie Nelson uh, Memorial Trash Can Player of the Week. Can't give it to Reggie. He's not on the team anymore. <laughs> uh, who are you going to give it to, man? Well, we can give it to the defensive backfield. Ooh. They on the team. 42 points. We lost that game because of them, not yeah. because of Derek Carr. Ooh. Not because of Derek Carr. That's true. That's yep. true. I'm, yep. I'm I'm glad you said that. Uh, let's just give it to the whole whole D. You say for uh, Max Crosby. I thought a really nice game. I thought Hankins actually had a pretty nice game too. Uh, you know, saw him trying to run after Aaron Rodgers at one point, which was a bit comical. But he was in there. But yeah, that whole defense, man, can't let you guys off the hook, especially the secondary, the backfield. As you said, Kane, spot on, one hundred percent. You gave up forty-two yards and nearly five hundred yards of offense on the day. Uh, Derek Carr does not play uh, defensive back for the Raiders, as far as I checked. Um, but who knows? Next week he might be. Dog. He might yeah. be out there. So, <laughs> um, but uh, the perfect segue, Kane. I'm glad you brought it up. A lot of blame on Carr for this L. Is he the one to carry the burden this week? Honestly, I mean, honestly, does he carry all the burden? Is it really Carr's fault? He doesn't carry all the burden. But what do we say going into this game? Uh, you cannot turn the ball over against Aaron Rodgers. So if you, you know, if you want to just look at it from an offensive perspective, you can't have three turnovers in the red zone and expect to beat a Hall of Fame quarterback. You're going to have to match this team score for score. But still, even if we go down and we score and we're up going into the half, that's not a guarantee that we're going to win the game the way the defense was playing. Yeah. Uh, even if we score 21 more points, that doesn't mean Aaron Rodgers is not going to score. What, was that going to suddenly tighten up the defense, us uh, scoring those three touchdowns? Was that going to tighten up the defensive backfield? I don't think so. No, sir. So, I mean, 
you know, is Carr to blame? This this goes on there. The whole team can take blame for this. You know, uh, the the defense, the off the, the 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 turnovers on offense, the defensive backfield, the coaching uh, for the defense. He was off for ten days. You didn't you didn't even show up. Um, you know, the blame, it's a lot of blame to go around. You know, uh, John Gruden put together a good offensive game plan. We moved the ball up and down the field against Green Bay. We, yeah. You know, we moved the ball. You cannot turn the ball over in the end zone, and you can't give up 42 points. That's that's basically what sums it up. Yeah, right there. I mean, anytime your D gives up 42 points, yeah, you, you're you not going to win. No. I mean, nine times out of ten, right? No. You you can't win you can't win giving up sometimes thirty bro like, you can't you know win. what I mean you you're <laughs> looking at forty two points and you're looking at Aaron Rodgers five TDs right he pa- five passing five. five passing TDs one rushing TD perfect passer rate. six fucking TDs mm-hmm. come on man mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's not all on Car it's not all on Car yeah, and obviously if Carr doesn't make that mistake we're a lot closer we're in the game mm-hmm. we're closer but can you make a great point, man? It does not guarantee a victory. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was talking about, right? It was going to be a shootout. And whoever had the last possession, if the Raiders played a perfect game on offense, it was going to it was gonna come down, based off of the way our defense was playing, to who had the last possession. That's who was going to come away with this exactly. game. Exactly. Yeah. And look, I mean, uh, I'll bring this back to the sponsor, mybookie.ag. If you guys, there you go. I know a lot of you Raider fans are the type of dude that just, just bet the Raider game, or maybe you throw the Raider game into your parlay, but you're always betting on that Raider game. All you need to do is tune into Kane's Corner every week, and we're going to give you, you the real. There you go. One of us on this show is going to get it right, and a lot of the times is <laughs> is 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 the namesake is Kane because Kane said it last time we were on the air. Uh, these defensive backs are going to have their work cut out for them. Yeah. All three of us said get out in front early and sit down with Josh Jacobs plugging away. Now yeah. Josh Jacobs did his part. Darren Waller did his part as a bailout. This defense did not do what it was supposed to do, and we told you exactly what they were going to do. You know, we predicted. Yeah, we did. We came predicted a win against Chicago. None of us predicted a win against Green Bay. Now, you know, behind the scenes, I uh, talking to Kane, and he was feeling good going into this game, and yeah. I was feeling like, you know, let's be competitive. You know, I don't think it'll be a a shit show that it turned into. Um, but no, nobody was over here saying, yeah, we're gonna beat Green Bay. Uh, you know, you know, Patrick Mahomes doesn't play for the Packers. Last time I checked, no. Uh, that's what. That's what you know. People got. <laughs> I think when Patrick Mahomes got hurt, everybody oh. was like, "Okay, we're going to the playoffs. Yeah. We, you know, we're gonna win the division now." You know, but Patrick Mahomes don't play for the Raiders. We still got to go out and play our games. We still got our quarterback. You know, on our defense, our our team. We, st- you, you know, Patrick Mahomes don't have nothing to do with the Raiders. So him getting hurt, yeah, it gives us a shot to catch them in the division. Mm-hmm. If if. They lose the next three games, yeah, but yeah. and we win the next three games. But you still got to go out and take care of business. And and Green Bay is a Super Bowl contender. They was four, five and one coming into yep. this. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. So yeah, so I mean, I, I never had this as a win on my calendar or my schedule, or whatever. And next week is not going to get any easier, you know. So we win the ones we're supposed to win. Stay competitive in the ones that you. You 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 know you may not go into with the idea that you might win, but if you stay competitive, you got a chance to win any game. So you win the ones you're supposed to win. You stay competitive in the ones that you think you might not win, but you stay competitive, you might win it. Mm-hmm. Today we had the three turnovers. That's you can't stay competitive like that. You know the defense giving up 42 points. I don't know what's up with these these DBs. Joiner, they should just they, he shouldn't even got on the plane to come mm-hmm. back. And I don't know what what ha- I don't know if it's the scheme or what, but I I watched Conley playing college. I ain't never seen this dude play this bad. Yeah, you know bad, what I'm saying. Bad. So I don't know what's up with that. I don't. You know, I I was hearing some some jargons today about oh maybe he got the Amari Cooper syndrome. You know, you don't fit or whatever. I, I don't know, but I ain't never seen him play this bad before. So I, I, there's some issues. Conley's regress, right? Conley had a decent year last year. I think he even started out this season okay against Denver, but it, it, this was his worst game of I, his career. I I still feel like he has not fully come back from that concussion, dog. Like he hasn't been the same since since that neck injury, concussion, whatever it was. 
where uh, where he where he went, you know, where he basically got knocked out of the game by uh, by Abram. Remember that? Yeah, I did. That was yeah. that was the first game of the season. Yeah. So he hasn't looked the same since then. He hasn't looked like what we were accustomed to seeing from mm-hmm. him after mm-hmm. last season. Even in that game, he was playing pretty good in that game. Of course, it was at the hands of the Broncos. We all know how their offense works. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he 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 just hasn't looked like himself, though. He hasn't no. looked like himself. He has he hasn't he hasn't made the plays that we thought we're gonna we're a given this year, bro. So here's here's a good question. This is kind of on the, off the cuff here, Kane Lamarcus Joyner comes in to this team, this franchise with the pedigree of being, you know, what's considered to be the best slot corner in the NFL, and um, uh, you know, an above average safety at that, a perennial Pro Bowler. Mm-hmm. Who's more disappointing right now at this point in the season? Is it Gary and Conley or is it Lamarcus Joyner? I'm gonna have to say Lamarcus Joyner. Um, I agree. We didn't expect Conley to come in here and play like this this bad. So you know he already his expectation was already there. We expected Joyner to come in and and solve our tight end issues. You know, guarding mm-hmm. tight ends and just all around slot corner, just giving us another solid corner on mm-hmm. the field. Just hasn't happened. And and raise it, it the level and raise the level of play around the secondary, right? He's a veteran. That's what he's supposed to do. Step in, bring that leadership presence, and raise the play of the guys around him. And today, Daryl Worley was your best cornerback. And uh, you know, we're not we don't that's think That's not saying much. And that's yeah. not saying much, you know. I mean, I don't think Worley's a trash player, but we could definitely do better. And when Worley's a standout guy today, I mean, Worley made a couple hits today, right? So Gary Conley can't tackle and just too much cushion all day. You know, every wide open wide receiver I saw today, I was like, who, who was the Simon was that? Oh, there's Gary and Conley. You know what I mean? Yep. So, well, Joiner is a Joiner was is get a got his share of uh, yeah. burns too. Yeah, the whole you know even Carl Joseph don't look. I'm, I'm you know the losing Abram was a big deal, bro. That was a huge huge deal. Uh, him going down, we don't even look the same. Mm. Yeah, um, the safety play isn't as good, and, I, and you know bless Eric Harris and Carl Joseph, they doing the best they can, but. That it's just not coming together. The safety's getting being out of position. You know they shouldn't be letting receivers get behind them. We're giving up big play after big play down the field. No safety down there. No safety help. Uh, it's just a mess. The defensive backfield is a mess. I see why we was in the rumor, the trade rumor for for Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, uh, yeah, because we, we really need another defensive back. Yeah, we so, do. Yeah, we do. And I'll call myself out on that. I said when that, those rumors were flying around, I said that was the least of our worries, right? Not at the least of our worries, but not now worth. Well, I mean, what was ended up giving up for Ramsey, we never would have done anyways. But just at that time when we were talking about it, before we found out what it would take, uh, you know, I, I thought, yeah, I don't know that we needed to do that for Ramsey, but right. Ramsey would look really nice on this defense yeah. right now. Although I still wouldn't have given even up. Marcus Peters. Even if we hollered yeah. at the, if the, if we would have known the Rams was trying to trade, you know, Marcus Peters to Baltimore, maybe we did. Maybe we talked to the Rams about it. I don't know, but that would have been an upgrade too. And Peters, so, had, Peters had know, a, he had an impact today. He had a pick six today against Russell Wilson. So, you know, yeah, it would have been nice. It would have been nice. Um, let, another guy that's kind of been coming under fire lately, although a bit quietly, is Cleland Furrow. Um, hasn't really shown up on the stack, the stat sheet so far this year. A little bit early on, um, but it's almost like he's not there. I was kind of I, I was watching uh, and reading a film breakdown on Silver and Black Pride today. It was a really good one. Uh, they were talking about this. They were calling Furrow into question. They were looking at some of his plays and where he's lining up and how he's being used. Shed a lot of light on Furrow. Uh, he's stunting a lot. Um, he's he's playing end on early like rundowns, but yeah. but using uh, being used to twist inside, uh, which is kind of taking him out of plays when teams pass on first and second down, and on third down passing play they're moving him inside. Uh, so he's really not being used as a at, defensive end, as a quarterback rusher, as a as a yeah. pass rusher. Yeah. yeah, as a pass rusher. Yeah, um, but, but I think we all kind of said that though after the first. You know, after we, after he was drafted and he was more that SDE or whatever, right. or that R, you know, that 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 defensive end, not so much the pass rusher, but the the one that can you know set the end, set yeah. the edge, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. 
he's versatile. He, he's definitely got sound technique. It's just the way he's being used. Um, as far as like the rush D, Cleveland's been great, man. He's solid, bro. Like, uh, what I've seen from him, yes, he's not getting the sacks. He's not putting up the stats. He's not putting up the numbers that uh, you know some of these other first round defensive ends are putting up and that's what everyone's calling into question right they're they're looking around the league and they're seeing all these other defensive ends that were drafted in the first round and they're saying like see see we should have taken him or we should have taken that guy yeah we should have taken burns see burns but he's not being used in that way right that's a different defensive scheme yeah okay they're not asking cleveland Mm -hmm. farrell to just like pin his ears back and go after the fucking quarterback every single down Okay, that's asking, not what he do anyway. That's not no. what he does anyways, no. and that's not why they drafted him. That's the reason why they drafted Cleveland Farrell in the first place because they wanted a defensive end to be playing that strong side to set the edge. Yeah. They weren't looking for Cleveland Farrell to be the sack master of this team, bro. Mm-hmm. They're looking to solidify the edges so that way mm-hmm. the rest of the defensive line can get to the quarterback. They're mm-hmm. not. They're just looking for somebody to hold up that side. And I think to this point, Cleveland has done that. Yeah, he is. He doesn't have, he's not putting up yes. humongous fucking that. tackles or, or any, he's not putting up large tackle numbers or anything like that. But one of the biggest plays that I saw, and this was against Indy, was uh, uh, where he kind of showed me what he is. Okay. You had, uh, Nelson, who's a highly touted fucking draft pick in, in his own right, right? The guard Nelson, who was drafted by Indianapolis. And he was pulling around. He has a full speed. Okay, he's got full speed advantage pulling from the from the right side of the line all the way to the left side. Cleveland's holding up that edge and he's catching him and holds up Nelson in his he just stops him in his tracks. And this to is to let the linebackers I saw yeah. that to let the linebackers yeah. come up and make a play. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, well that's and, what he that's what that's what he does. That's and that's you know, exactly that's what, what you the want. Defensive from end him. does in Gunther's yeah, his scheme exactly. And, yeah, Gun- in Gunther's time in Cincinnati, I think one year his defensive ends had uh, you know double digit sack numbers combined, yeah. so, something like that. Yeah. So it is what it is. The pressure in PG system really comes from the middle, um, but we're seeing that's not always the case. You got a guy like Max Crosby, you know, maximum effort from Crosby. He's got the speed. He's just greasy. He's a greasy ass player, man. You can't get your hands on him. So, I think Furl's doing exactly what they're asking him to do, and it's his first year. Let this guy develop. Let him mature a little bit. I know it sounds like all oh, the standard Homer take on a young guy. Give him the pass. How long will it take? How long will we wait? You wait. He's a first round defensive end, and you just wait. He's not. He's not Nick Bosa. Uh, but that's not what he was designed to be. That's not what we intended him to be. I think some of y'all you see defensive end and you know missing. Cool. You wanted some sacks. You wanted some yeah. sacks. You want sacks. Yeah. Or, or you draft somebody at number four that's a, that's got D E behind their name, and the first thing you think is sack machine. It's mm-hmm. not always like that. No. So I, I don't think Cleveland mm-hmm. Farrell was 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 drafted to be Max replacement, and I think that's the way he's being looked at just by the uh, the position right. attached to his name. Right. Is that fair? But, hey, back to Max, though. Max is going to develop into something great here, guys. Romo said it today. Yeah. He, he's going he's gonna to develop into something great. Wait till this guy gets a couple, you know, another 10 pounds of muscle on him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because this, mm-hmm. this dude, the motor on him is incredible. The motherfucker has no quit, no stop. Even if, even if he is getting blocked. Even if, there's no time where you where you can stop or freeze frame and you see like he's he's taking defeat. Mm-hmm. He's not taking defeat. He's gonna keep working until he cuts he gets loose or until that ball's gone. And he can no longer make a play. Yeah, that's that's what he does, man. I do. I, I like I like that dude. He plays pissed off. Hell yeah. Yeah. Wait till he throw a couple more plates on the barbell this off season. Throw a couple Oakland phone books on that barbell. There you go. There you go. Let him get it. Yeah, Farrell needs to bulk up too. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. Farrell Farrell can do. bulk up a little bit. He, he can give us a better uh, a bull rush, uh, you know. He he needs to develop a bull rush, and he had one at at uh, uh, Clemson. But I guess you know you got to you, you going against these big these big ends in the NFL. You're gonna have to even Mac had to bulk up after his first. Yeah. You're not gonna just come in and you know what I mean. You got to there's gonna be some adjustments. You are playing against and, grown and man, both him bro. and uh, Max. You playing against can use a little bit more muscle huh yeah. you're playing against some large grown-ass man dog in the nfl right i mean we can all agree on that there's some large tackles out there 
So you're going to have to bulk up. You're gonna, it doesn't matter if you were a stud in college or not. You're going to have to put on some weight. You're going to have to put on some muscle. And you're going to definitely have to fucking upgrade your techniques because yeah. – even mm-hmm. that on all, all on its own, even if you can out muscle a guy, you're you're stronger, you're bigger, you're faster. That's not going to get you the to the quarterback. You're going to have to fucking improve your techniques. You're going to have a spin move. You got to have, you know, a under move, wh- whatever it is that you got. You just got to add more and more techniques to get to that QB. man. Uh, let me get a little deep on you guys. There's a, there's a gentleman named Piaget. Uh, he studies brain development and child developmental and educational philosophy. And he has something that they call the zone of proximal development, which is what most education, if not all education, is based on today. What's the zone of proximal development? What's the ZPD, Kenny? I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's just the notion that when you're learning in school, you're learning outside of your comfort zone, above and beyond what you already know. And it's, it's, it's in stages um, that allows you to develop and grow, hit your goal, and then move on to the next zone. So, And that's, that's where most players coming out of college are is safe for your standouts and that's where cleveland's at right now and he's got some development to do uh there's an adjustment period between the nfl and college yeah. and i think they're asking him to do a lot he's, he's seen as a swiss army knife so it's going to take him some time to develop all of those attributes so let's be patient man and if he ends up being a bust and busting out shit we'll call him out I yeah. doubt that. I, I don't. I don't see that. I, yeah, I doubt I don't, that I don't very either. seriously. Yeah, he's a smart I doubt dude. That very seriously. Smart guy. Great character. Uh, dedicated to the game. He's in good shape. I, I think he'll come along just fine. I think you're right, Kane. Um, but since you're on the phone, man, are you stay on the phone here with us for a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm oh. straight. What's, what's going on? All right. So, jo- why don't you stay, stick around here right now? Let's let's talk about this game next week. We got a game coming Let's up. Go. We won't be on the air next week. I'll be out of town. So let's let's spend some time on this uh, for our listeners. Uh, Oakland, one last trip on this road stretch here. We're going to be flying into Houston. Now, the, the team's flying back to Oakland right now if they haven't already landed. And so Houston's probably the shortest trip on this roadie that we've taken, right? Um, it's a hop, skip, and jump over there to Texas. So it's, it's a nice way to finish out. Now, Houston lost their game to Indy today. Uh, and before you say, oh, Houston's on the skids, look, Houston was in that game today. Yeah. Um, two two last minute mistakes, uh, a pick by, two picks by Watson, really one of them was tipped. So we won't put that all on him. Um, but they were in this until the very end. Um, and, and Indy's a, a team that's surging. Uh, Indy has not lost a game since we beat them. Yeah. Uh, they are a good team. Jacoby Brissett is a good quarterback, like I told you. Uh, they're doing well. Jacoby had a great game today, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about this Houston game. What are some of these keys to the game? I'll give you guys some numbers, and then we'll talk about it, okay? Um, Houston, a lot of similarities to Oakland on the stat sheet. Uh, they're holding teams about 84 yards a game on the ground. Uh, stout run defense, similar to Oakland. Uh, they're giving up uh, close to 300 per game in the air. Uh, they're giving up 15 touchdowns on the season. Uh, and again, they lost Philip Gaines today, a member of their secondary. So we'll see if he's out next week. On on offense, Houston they like to run the ball. They're 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 a great run running team. A combination of Duke Johnson, Carlos Hyde, and Deshaun Watson himself. He likes to run the ball as well. He's they're a formidable opponent on the ground. Yeah. Uh, Watson though struggles with some inconsistency. Uh, when he came into the league his first year, I thought this guy was a truth. And for the first few weeks of the season, he he was shown that he was yeah. until he got injured. Hasn't quite been the same since he came back, but Watson's still a problem. Um, his availability, oh sorry, and, and he did lose a weapon today. Will Fuller went down, so we talked about that already. So, you know, just a warning to everybody that overlooked Houston at the beginning of the season. And Houston's a team that's often overlooked, and I see why. They're not, they're not a juggernaut. They're not a playoff contender every single year. They're in a weak division, but they got playmakers. And I'm really big on Deshaun Watson. He's the type of quarterback that is going to kill you if you give him the opportunity. Yeah. And he's a physical guy. He's a bigger QB, and he, he's got wheels, man. He will hurt you on the ground. So he's dual threat. Uh, I I think a lot of folks going through the, the, the schedule said, you know, oh, Houston – uh, yeah, we'll win that game, hmm. you know. But coming off the heels of this loss, and now that they've lost, they're looking to get right too, and they're looking to get right in front of their fans. So, 
let's talk about this game a little bit. Kane, since since you're on the phone here, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you first. I mean, just first of all, what's your gut feeling going into this game, and what what's your realistic outlook uh, against Houston? Uh, well, I, again, I had us losing this game. Um, you know, looking at the schedule at the beginning of the season, and uh, so it's gonna be a tough. It's gonna be a tough, tough one. You know, like you said, Deshaun Watson is a good quarterback, and they got a good run game. Their defense is formidable. Uh, you know, it's actually pretty good defense. Romeo Cannell is a good defensive coordinator. So this is not going to be easy. They're trying to make the playoffs. They was just fighting for first place in their division with the Colts, who we did beat. Um, doesn't mean we're going to beat Houston. But, you know, Houston is a good team, man. Like I said, going to come into this game, no mistakes, no turnovers in the red zone. It's probably going to go down like it was against Green Bay, score for score, because Deshaun Watson can move the ball, and he is a formidable, formidable quarterback, probably better than formidable. I think he, he's a Pro Bowl quarterback. Didn't he make the Pro Bowl last year? I believe he did, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so he's a Pro Bowl quarterback. So it's not going to be easy. You just, no mistakes. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's probably going to go down to the wire. Whoever, like Chase said earlier, whoever got the ball at the end of the game and make that last score with the few seconds left is probably going to win the game. That's just, that's probably what it's going to come down to. Yeah. Because, r- real quick, we did move the ball against Green Bay, who does have good pass defense and a formidable defensive line. The two, the, you know, that tackle on the defense, the Smith brothers, or whoever they was calling them, those yeah, guys yeah. are legit. Yeah. And we moved the ball. We, yeah. we, we at will. We that's, did. You know, that's so a good, just, that, really quick. No that, mistakes. That's a good point yeah. because, you know, obviously when you talk about Green Bay, the, the player that comes to mind is Aaron Rodgers and that Green Bay offense. That's just sort of pedigree for the Packers. But don't overlook their defense. They were young, fast, competitive defense. And despite the mistakes that came out our own hand today, you know, Green Bay did not force those mistakes, right? We forced our own hand there. You're right. We moved the ball very well against them. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to point out kind of something that you said. Green Bay's got a good defense, man. I, I like their defense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, it's better than I thought it was coming into the game. I, You know, um, and we ran the ball against them and we moved that wheel. So I think we can – offensively, we can move the ball against any defense. I think we showed that against Chicago Bears. It's the the mistakes. You can't make mistakes. This team can't afford Derek Carr or anybody else on the the team to make a mistake and think we're going to survive it. You know, it's just it's it's hard to do even for a good team. I mean, not saying that we're a bad team, but we're not a very good team. Right. You know what right, I mean? So right. if, you, if you're making mistakes, you can't overcome them when you're just an uh, average team trying to get good as the season goes on, which I believe we're trying to do. So we can beat Houston with no mistakes, and defense can't give up 42 points. We'll say. We'll say. Yeah, this game's on the defense, man. I, I'm really confident in our offense at this point. Despite again the, the mistakes made today, I feel good about this this offense. I think even against a stingy Houston defense, John Gruden is going to scheme up and find a way to find yards uh, underneath. And, and if we dink and dunk you to death, a thousand paper cuts, whatever it takes, control the ball, control the time of possession, yeah. and uh, you know give give your defense some some time to rest. Don't put the ball, don't put the game all on the D like we did early on this week because. You already know you can't rely on them. So I'm looking at our our, our season prediction. I'm just kind of go back. Uh, actually had us beating the Chiefs at home early in the season. I was wrong about that. Had us losing to the Bears. I was wrong about that. I swapped that out. I am right on schedule, and so is Che. Um, you know, had us losing to the Packers. Um, che had us winning this week, and uh, and I backed that up last week. I did say yeah, win by seven. Yeah. Right? You're coming off the bye. You said coming off the bye. That was a big reason for it. But all three of us have us losing to the Texans this week. So hopefully the Raiders can prove us wrong. I'm feeling more confident about this team than I did when we made these predictions. Mm-hmm. So I, I, mean, I, I think the Texans, I think we can win this game. I think it's going to be a close one. I'm going to have the Raiders by three. Okay. I like that. Listen, man, I think it comes down, it comes down to the ball control again. We're playing a talented quarterback. Whenever we play a quarterback that can actually do some things, 
um, that won't kill himself, that won't necessarily shoot himself in, the own, in his own foot. Um, it's all about keeping him off the field. It's all about keeping him off the field. And so we got to we got to win that time of possession. We have to run the ball down the throats of the Texans, just like we did against the Bears, just like we needed to do against the Packers. And we did. We actually did that against the Packers. We just made mistakes. And um, and we put a defense out there that just had no answer for Aaron Rodgers. This I, I think uh, I think Watson is very, very talented, very, very good. Definitely top you know, top seven, top eight quarterbacks in the league, maybe. Um, just because of his skill set, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think he's a he's an Aaron Rodgers necessarily as far as breaking down the defense. He's very smart. If you saw him in his post uh, his post conference uh, post uh, game conference a couple weekends ago, um, somebody posted that up there. Oh, that breakdown. That yeah, there was yeah. a little breakdown about how he was he was talking about the defenses. He's breaking down the coverages and whatnot in his presser um he's very smart he's very talented he 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 can you know he can do all the things that you need a quarterback to do um but i'm not gonna put him at the level of aaron Rodgers, those guys those elite quarterbacks just yet um so that being said there's an opportunity for him to make a mistake and 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 you touched on it today he made some of those mistakes he made a mistake uh against uh Against Indianapolis, made a couple. One of them wasn't his fault. One of one of them wasn't his fault. There was a tip ball, right? Um, but he turned over the ball twice on interceptions, and that that cost him the game. So, hopefully, that's what we get from him too. We get a pick or something because we need that on defense just to keep just to keep you know things in our favor. Um, and on offense, we just cannot turn the ball over, man. We cannot give up the ball for any reasons okay no turnovers on downs no fumbles no fucking interceptions those are killers to us because we don't have a defense that we can say oh they're gonna get it back for us immediately Mm -hmm. and and second of all especially when you when you make those drives we drove the ball down the field on green bay on all of those turnovers Mm -hmm. okay that's the biggest highlight of anything right Mm -hmm. we were in we were in the area of, of, of scoring. We we're going to come away with a field goal or a touchdown on all of those drives. And we end up turning the ball over on downs. We turn the ball over on a fumble, turn the ball over on an interception. Mm-hmm. Okay. We cannot have that um, because our, we, we don't have a defense that's going to get that ball back. So you, you take over the time of possession, you, you win the turnover battle, and you hope that your defense is going to get lucky and get a, 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 you know, a mistake pick or a fumble and that's gonna that's gonna give you the necessary you know distance from that team for them to keep them from fucking catching you and before you think like oh turnovers are now become the thing because the theme because of this this week look just looking at the texans 2019 how it's played out for them so far uh they've won or lost every single game by one possession say for the falcons week one uh, they lose to the Saints by two points, twenty eight to thirty. Uh, they, they they beat the Jaguars thirteen to twelve. Uh, they beat the the char the Chargers twenty seven to twenty. Uh, they beat the uh, they lose to the Panthers sixteen to ten. Uh, they lose to the uh, they beat the Falcons fifty three to thirty two. That's like the one anomaly, right? And the Falcons. The, the Falcons like the smell of shit in their diapers. Okay, this season <laughs> they they love the smell of Dookie. Um, <laughs> and then they beat the Chiefs 31 to 24. Again, one score game. Uh, today, they lose to the, the Colts by seven points, 30 to 23. One score game. Mistakes are going to be huge in this game. Time of possession, yes. Yes. Run the ball, limit the mistakes. Yeah. Keep it out of their hands. You know? What, what's your prediction this week, Kane? I say it's going to come, like I said, it's going to come down to, to a real tight score. So I'm going to say. 27-24 Raiders. 27-24, three points. I like that. I like that too. I'm just gonna I'm gonna copy you, Kane. I like that too much to stray away from. I'm not even gonna try to be original or different just for the sake of the broadcast. I'm gonna say the same thing. Twenty seven and twenty four. About three points, huh? Where are you at? I'm I'm gonna stick to the seven. I'm gonna stick to the seven. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go twenty eight twenty one. Okay. Raiders. So here it is. Okay. Here it is. 
through seven weeks now, we've given you our predictions, and I will say uh, we have not all been wrong every week. In this week, all three of us are predicting a win. So what does that mean? <laughs> Book it. Write it down in <laughs> permanent marker. <laughs> Raiders bounce back this week. <laughs> Real quick, real quick. The one thing that I did want to just want to look at. I'm look, I'm pulling this up real quick. Um, was Houston's sack total? So how many sacks have they given up? I believe it's 21 sacks right now. Okay. So about, uh, and that's uh, and, about and, that, Watson, and that doesn't but, have up to date numbers either. That doesn't have up to date. Deshaun numbers. Watson holds on to the football. You, you, he does. You know what I right. mean? Like that's his. That's his. Uh, his his his. What do you call it? His 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 mo. His, his modus uh, op. Right, yeah, yeah. He that's his thing. He doesn't take sacks. I mean, well, obviously he takes sacks, but he holds on to the ball. So that's why they, the sack total looks like that. But it's not like that for real. Mm-hmm. It's just because of him. But if you reg- kind of follow what I'm saying. Regardless of the fact, I, I I'm pretty sure that's a a higher sack total than Green Bay. Oh yeah. Right. So yeah. if we're looking at Green Bay, they give up twelve. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we got one today. So that's actually pretty good. That's pretty decent. Yeah. Okay. So I look for us to be able to pressure Deshaun Watson a lot more than we did Aaron Rodgers. And we have a a, a quarterback in, in Watson that's not at the level m- maybe mentally, not yet at least, Yeah. as an Aaron Rodgers where he can break down. Like we said, right. Aaron Rodgers went out there. He surgically took us apart on defense. He He – elongated that fucking snap count okay he's out there huh, huh, and he's throwing all these fucking fake hikes and then watching what we're doing taking his sweet fucking time waiting for us to give savvy. ourselves up he was a very fucking you, smart well, quarterback right savvy eric and, harris was quoted eric harris was quoted as saying that uh he knew what we was doing before we even could get into yeah. our, what we were doing yeah you know what i'm saying so like you can't fool somebody who's seen every coverage that's a, this is what Eric Harris said, I didn't say it. Yeah. You know, you, you can't fool somebody that saw every coverage every all this time. So you you're right about that. Yeah. We may be able to get to, to uh Watson. But it, he one thing he will do is he will break and run on you. Yes. He will. Just like Aaron yeah. Rodgers, and he's a lot faster and will do it more. He, and and I so, and I expect him to do so. But what I'm saying is if you can put more pressure on this guy, if you can get to him, take him down a couple of times. Maybe it's three, four sacks, okay? There's a chance there's a fumble. There's a chance there's a fucking tip ball. There's a chance there's an interception. Turnovers is what we need on defense because if if we don't get those turnovers, a lot, a lot of times it's going to be a long drive mm-hmm. and a score of some kind, mm-hmm. field goal or touchdown against mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Okay, If we can get to this guy, there's we're giving us ourselves a higher chance that we might get that turnover and get that ball back for our offense. And then we can go back to what we do. Run the ball, eat up the clock, and stay ahead. The Raiders have to stay ahead of these fucking guys. They have to get ahead early and stay there for the rest of the game, man. I might be wrong here because I'm just shooting from the hip, but I think the Raiders have won every game in which they've recovered a turnover this season. Okay. I might be wrong, but it sounds right. It It sounds right. right. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good. It feels good. No turnovers today, (laughs) right, in our favor. No, No turnovers in our favor today, Al. No, uh, no. I don't think we got the ball against KC. Could I be wrong? I don't. Uh, think. We did not get a turnover against KC. Okay, and then against the Vikings, which was a total diarrhea party. <laughs> no we t- did not get a turnover uh, there either. I think okay. you're right, Doc. I think right. you're right. So I think you're right. I like you guys. I like you guys. Uh, let's take a look at this before. Again, one last thing before we get off the phone here with you, Kane, because um, we weren't able to include you on this before the season. And again, these predictions were, were mad early, real, real premature. But we're about the halfway point now here, close enough, headed into week eight. Um, let's look at the rest of the schedule, man. So we, we gave you our Texans prediction. Uh, I will say, mm-hmm. I will say versus the Lions early on. Uh, che and I predicted a victory, both of us. Um, are you going to stand by that, Che? Are you going to say a victory against Detroit? I'm, I'm standing by it, but the Lions are definitely making a case for themselves this season, they right? Are, um, are. Definitely at the beginning of the season, we didn't see a defense that the that the Lions are putting on on the field yeah. week in and week out. Yeah. So 
Um, it's not going to be an easy win, but I'm going to stick to it. It's going to be a home game, long, a long road trip, right? Ooh. We've been on the road for a long time. We're going to be hungry, bro. We're going to be there. We're going to be live in effect. We're going to be loud as fuck. And I, I sure hope that that gives this team the energy it needs to fucking pull out the victory. Okay. so you st- uh, Matt Stafford ain't going to hear shit. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. He ain't going to hear nothing. Yeah. Okay. We got that W. I'm sticking by it. So let's stick by that. Uh, Kane, man, what what do you think against the Lions coming up here? No, I think we I think we're gonna beat the Lions. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we'll beat the Lions. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy because they are a good team. They turned out to be good, you know. So well, I think we can still beat them. We we'll be home for some home cooking. Five weeks away, like you said, the, the fans will be juiced, pumped. The Raiders themselves should be pumped to get back in black. So yeah, we should be we should win that one. Okay, so you got us winning against the Lions, um, and then let's go let's go again. We got another home game right after that. It's a short turnaround uh, coming off the game on the third. We had a Thursday night game on the seventh against the L.A. Chargers, um, which both uh, actually with Che had a victory. I had an L. I'm going to go ahead and change my prediction to a win because the Chargers. Um, All right, garbage. Yeah, they got a scat rave going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> they they got that dookie oh, rave in effect right now. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna switch mine up to a, to a win. Um, Kane, what do you what do you think about about the Chargers coming off a short week? Yeah, I think we win. All right, all right. So yeah, me, I think we beat the Chargers. Let me uh hold on hold on one second. Let's do let's do this. <clears throat> so I'm going to change that up. I'm going to go with the win too. So that's that's wins across the board against the Chargers. Let's move ahead here uh, again. Last home game before hitting the road again against the Bengals in Week 11, November 17th. It's a regular start time, Sunday, 1:25 p.m. in the black hole. Uh, both Che and I early season had the win against the Bengals. I'm keeping that right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kane, are you on board with us beating the Bengals? Absolutely. The Bengals is trash. If we lose to the Bengals, then we shouldn't win the game for the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, the Bengals are trash. I like that. That's fucking fact. <laughs> that's a fact. Uh, that's a fact and a hot take at the same time. <laughs> that might be the first time on this show, and I'm not going to argue with it. Uh, so that's you know if you, if you're if you're listening to us, um, this is where kind of like where you you taking the the Scantron test, yeah, and like four answers in a row were D. Yeah. And you're starting to like. You're like, I don't know. It seems, it seems suspect. So, <laughs> I don't know about this one. I'm How so, could it be the same answer, dog? Yeah. So that right now, if you're listening to us, that's four wins in a row, uh, starting with the Texans next week. So um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a bit suspect. You might be thinking, you guys, you're homers. Come on. <laughs> We're two hours into this podcast. I think we've proved we're not homers. Uh, and then we go on the road, and the Pillaging Podcast will be f- in full effect in Brick City, New Jersey, when we face off against the New York Jets. Um, I had that as a win. I'm going to keep that as a win. I know their defense is is better than we thought. Uh, will Sam Darnold be back for that game? He'll be back He's, for that game. He was already back this week. He's back, He's this, back week. this week, bro. So um, I don't know, man. What do you guys think? Uh, che, you and I had this as a win. Kane, uh, let's go to you. Let's chime in. We we got four wins in a row, according to us, and we're hitting the road to New Jersey against the Jets. Is that a win or a loss? Man? Oh, man, that is a trap game for real. Um, all right, I, I let me say this. I watched the Jets play last week. Sam Darnold was back last week. They played uh, Dallas and beat them. Mm-hmm. Um, the team looked like shit with Luke Falk, but with Sam Darnold behind the, the, the behind center, they didn't look like shit. Mm. And that defense didn't play that. No. And that defense is pretty good. I, I, you know, since we, I mean, I want, I want us to win every game. So I'm going to say we're going to win, but the Jets are not going to be an easy win. Just put it like that. No, it's not going to be easy. No. No, nope. watch watch a game. They are so much better with Sam Darnold behind, the, and they got Robbie Anderson who can is a deep threat. They got Jamison Crowder who ain't a slouch. You know they got Lev Bell. 
They got a good offensive line. Yeah. They got good defense. They got good defense, uh, good linebackers, you know, okay DBs. But the defensive line is good enough that the DBs only got to hold on for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So here we again. Like I said, I, I think we're going to win. I'm going to say we're going to win, but okay. it's not going to be easy. I don't even want to start breaking the game down because I'm sure we're going to do that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. They're not yeah, going to yeah. be easy to win. Yeah, yeah. You know, you made your points. They're good points. Uh, che, what do you think, man? You had this as a win early on. You sticking with that? I'm sticking to it, dog. I got to stick by it. I got to stick by it. I, I'm real tempted to stick with it, man, because, you know, the three of us are going to be there like Cerberus, the three headed <laughs> monster. Uh, you, you know, between the three of us, it's going to be loud, and we're going to be with Chuck. And Fitz and, and Tom and the rest of those cats and, and Johnny's gonna be out there. We have a lot of crazy motherfuckers out There's there. There's a lot of fucking crazy uh, motherfuckers out there. Don't you know, I think Cam might be rolling through. Bobby, he's gonna be here. Uh, he's quiet right now. He's loud at the game. <laughs> um, we're all gonna be out there, man. I think. I think Chuck. Um, from, by the way, from the Anibra Nation podcast, shout out and the Fan Club Blitz. That's right. Um, yeah, they they're doing double time. They're on the Crow's Nest and. Uh, Murph's Man Cave Network. So um, just a quick plug. You know, we're going to be out there. I think Chuck secured about 75 tickets for our section alone, and those are all booked. So Raider Nation will be deep. But I'm going to reel back. I'm going to paint this as a loss. I think that I think the Jets are doing really well. Um, I have us a four wins in a row, so I'm using that Scantron method. Mm. The answer is not D here. It's probably like B or C. And I'm just uh, second guessing myself a little bit. Hopefully, I'm wrong. <laughs> Usually, I'm wrong when I do. So I'm really just I'm changing this for good luck. Painted as good luck. I'm gonna say that we're gonna lose that game, and I'm gonna be wrong. So uh, keep smiling, Raider Nation. Let's move on. December first, Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes back in the saddle. Uh, we are in Kansas City, the first day of December, where Derek Carr has never won a game in his life. <laughs> And it ain't going to start then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, we're not going to beat the Chiefs in Kansas City. Yeah. Unless Patrick Mahomes is hurt. I'm with you. I'm with you. Che, man, uh, what's on you, man? You switching that up from an L to a dub? Is this the year? I see you <laughs> I see you itching over there, bro. Che's got a look on his face. He's shifting around in his chair. He's like, mm. I got the I got the finger on the trigger, though. <laughs> he too, bro. I'm itching over here. <laughs> Listen, man. <clears throat> we we very well could have beat fucking KC at home. I know it's a different situation in KC. Um, but we shut them down three quarters just like they did. Um, they put up all their points in one quarter. I think this defense comes out and plays a little bit better than they did last and I think this offense comes out and plays a little bit better, if not a lot bit better than they did last. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna fucking go with the win, though. I'm All gonna right. go by three. Well, one win of us. Three. Oh, one of us will be right. One of us will be right. Let's hope it's Che. Uh, all right. So yeah, me too. The next game, uh, Che and I were split on. Again, we uh, we we weren't able to get you uh, that week, um, Kane, but. The next game's against the Titans. Um, this one is at home. And I had us losing to the Titans. I think this was just kind of one of those wild. Actually, I had us winning against the Titans. Che had us losing had to the Titans. Titans. And I kind of feel like you had pegged this game as the one you should win but lose. Yeah. I kind of felt like that That was like your, your reasoning behind this. Yeah. Um, and at that time, I think we were comparing the Titans to us a little bit. A lot of question marks. Town on the team, not putting it all together. A game that we could lose, a sort of a 50-50. Mm-hmm. So we'll start with you, Che. Uh, you had this as an L, but seeing what the Titans are doing this year, Mariota is now benched. Tannehill's a starting quarterback. Yes, they won today. Uh, they beat the Chargers. Uh, Melvin Gordon doing all he can to continue his holdout while on the field. Fumbled at the goal line to hand the, the, the Titans a win. Are you willing to change this prediction to a W? <clears throat> That's a good question, man. Listen, I, I think that the Titans' defense is still good, man. The mm-hmm. Titans' defense is still solid. Um, Derrick Henry is still a good – he's a good running back, man. Um, if they run the ball, if they stick to the run, mm-hmm. um, their quarterback situation is what it is. But I'm pretty sure fucking – 
what's his name? Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. I was about to call him something else. <laughs> Tann- <laughs> I'm pretty sure Tannehill, when he was in Miami, kind of gave us a little bit of trouble too, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's unfortunate. But that when he did look good, he I think he looked good against us. Um, Yeah. That is a game in Oakland, though. So it's kind of tough. But I'm looking at my board, and it's looking real green over there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, am I really about to just call win outs all the way through the end of the season? Because that's not realistic. No. I think of, out of the teams that are left on the board, the Titans, pro- the Titans and the Jaguars probably have the better uh, opportunities to beat us. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with that just because it's one of those, like I said, you, it's a team you're supposed to beat, but for whatever reason, you blow it. Um, I feel like that's one of those trap games, man, for us, the Titans. Okay. Yeah, they got all those, all that turmoil, all that nonsense going on over there, but I wouldn't be surprised if they somehow figure out a way to beat us, you know, okay. unfortunately. Okay. All right. So uh, Titans, you're going to stick with the L. Yeah, I'm, I am. I'm sticking with my W. I, I think that they're a hot mess, and I think as we get deeper into the season, that defense being what it is, they got issues that they're not going to figure out. I don't see the – I think the Titans, it's a little bit too late to get back in the game. So I'm sticking by that. Kane, where are you at on the Titans in Week 14 at home? In I, think we, I, I, I think we're going to beat them. I, I agree with you, uh, Kenny. I think they're a mess right now, and I think they had a, a situation where – they may be looking to get a new quarterback somehow or do, you know, do something at the quarterback position. So, uh, with that being said, yeah, I, I think we can go in and, and, and handle our business against the Titans. Mm-hmm. You I so don't you, see you, no reason why we should lose. You, you think, though, you think they're like, I hear you say they're like looking to get a new quarterback. Definitely, for sure, right? Yeah. They're, they're not confident in their quarterback situation. But you think to the extent with that they would throw the rest of the season? No, like no. To try I'm to not get a saying they're going to throw the rest of the season, but I, I'm, I'm saying anytime you have a situation where uh, you got a starting quarterback and then you that that quarterback has now been benched, all that shit rolls down into the locker room and to the to the yeah. rest of the team. Yeah. Now, now the team is looking around at the at the at the at the front office like, what's going on? You know, you got some players that might have liked Mariota, some that didn't, some wanted to keep him, some did. It's just a mess. Like Kenny said, it, it, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster when that happens in the midseason. And I just don't think the Titans are good enough put together to overcome that type of adversity in, mm-hmm. in the middle of the season. Mm-hmm. I don't see them winning many more games. I, they won today, but – who was they? Who did they play today? They 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 didn't. It wasn't a good team. They did win. The Chargers. Today. They, yeah, they beat the yeah, Chargers. They beat the Chargers. Yeah, the Chargers. Yeah, full, and the fumbled. Chargers are, are are a mess right now. Yeah, Chargers. You know what I mean? So the Chargers yeah. fumbled. So anyway, yeah, I think we're gonna beat them. Yeah, Gordon Melvin Gordon fumbled on the goal line with 15 seconds left to play today, and uh, the Titan uh, Tannehill took a knee to seal that victory. So it was a close one. You're in a close one against the Chargers. That tells me everything I need to know about your team at this point in the 2019 season. So I'm sticking with the two. So, uh, again, one of us will be right that week. Um, yeah, here's a hot take. John Elway trades a draft pick and a molar, a gigantic molar <laughs> for Marcus Mariota before the deadline. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. That's not gonna, you don't make trades unless you're in the mix. But I just I needed to say it, that he's trading one of his teeth. <laughs> All right, so week week fifteen, uh, Jacksonville is again back to back home games. Uh, Jacksonville rolls into our house. It's a one o five p.m. Pacific Standard Time kickoff on December fifteenth in the black hole. This is the final game in Oakland. No smoke and mirrors. No question marks. This is it. This is one for the record books. This is for history. Uh, we saw what happened last year against Denver. We showed up. The fans showed up. People were ripping seats out the fucking building. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we smoked the Denver Broncos. It's the final game of the season. I'm sticking with the W just on that alone, strength alone. Gardner men's shoes 
has played well this year, but he's never played in the black hole, nope. and he's never played against a fan base that is about to get the team ripped out of their backyard. I think there's a lot at stake in this game. Yeah. Uh, this is down the stretch. We might be playing for a wild card oh. again, and I didn't say this during the segment. Uh, this this game this week against Houston, wild early wild card implications. Their win this week knocked us out of the wild card. They are now the number two spot in the wild card. Uh, so that being said, I think we are still in the hunt, looking at our picks and our amended picks here going down the stretch. I think there's just too much at stake for the Oakland Raiders to show up and lay an egg. I'm sticking with my W. Uh, Kane, what do you say about, about this game, Week 15 against the Jacksonville Jaguars? Uh, this is a – okay, the Jaguars are a good team. It's a, probably a team we shouldn't beat. But since it's the last game at home and the, the way the crowd is going to be juiced, the team is going to be juiced, the atmosphere is just going to be electric off the hook, something that I don't think – will ever be forgotten in in you know inside that coliseum it's going to be too much for jacksonville to overcome i say we get a victory all right all right i'm putting you down there as a victory <clears throat> okay all right che what wh- where you have us at right there i'm sticking to a victory dog we we called the victory for that very same reason you just alluded to it's the final game of the season, but more more so than that, this is the final game in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think we could pretty much cement that fact that it it's going to be the final game in Oakland. I don't think we have any news as to there being something that's going to be causing a, an issue to starting the season in Vegas next year. Um, yeah. It's going to be it, man. So the same crowd, the same hungry crowd for victory is going to be there as was last season against Denver on Christmas Eve, right? Mm -hmm. Your boy Bobby was there in the rain like a fucking real fan, (laughs) okay? I had family duties or else I would have been there too. Um, But we're going to get that W, dog. I'm I'm, I'm sticking with that. Yes, uh, the Jags are... Are, are a good team. They're good defensively, and they've been able to be productive offensively since they switched their quarterback. Well, not by their you know, choice. Nick Foles went out with an injury. Mm-hmm. But this boy, this dude, Gardner Minshew's, you said it, porn stash, he's been out there <laughs> doing his damn thing. But not in the black hole, dog. Sorry. Not in the black hole. Not with us there. Not with us angry, yelling. With tears in our eyes. With tears in our eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. Right. It's, yeah, that's a that's a victory though. Uh, all three of us predicting a win in week fifteen. One of us will be right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> one of us will. All right, so let's let's get into the final two games of the season. Uh judging by everybody's numbers here so far. Um, it's really looking like the Raiders are now in the playoff hunt at this point. See guys, even after a loss. We're giving you something to be optimistic about, but I digress. Week 16 is on the road, kind of, uh, in L.A. against the Chargers. It's 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 an away home game for the for the Raiders. You know how it is. Uh, che, man, what, what do you got against the Chargers? You predicted a loss before yeah. the season started. How do you feel about that now? Man, I, I mean, I want to make that a W mm-hmm. for sure. Um, But, again, I'm I'm going back to that, like, that anxious feeling of like that's a lot of green on my board. <laughs> that's Gantron. It's a lot of fucking, anxiety. It's a lot of victories, man. You really gonna go there? You gonna go there? You remember the fiasco that you had a couple seasons ago, Chad, with the thirteen and three predictions, man. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> my mind is is telling me no. Shades of thirteen and three. Okay. <laughs> oh, damn. Chill out, Che Kelly. <laughs> fuck that. I'm going victory because fuck ooh, Philip Rivers, dog. Okay. Going with the W. Fuck anxiety. Kane, where you at? I heard that. Where you at, Kane? I got to say we're going to lose, man. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm not saying we're going to lose just because one of us got to say it. I got a reason. Mm-hmm. The reason why we're going to lose is because San Diego always has a spurt in their season where they go two or three games where they look like shit. And then down the stretch, they fighting for a playoff spot. It, 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 go back and look. And I'm going to say right. it's right. going to happen again this year. That 
that is a playoff caliber team. And if they turn the light on, week 17 could be battling for second place, a wild card. Uh, you know, it could have implications okay. to come with it. And, and you know, I, even though it's a, a home away from home game, I just think uh, when it comes to big games, Derek Carr is going to have to prove to me that you can win a big one. And I think that game is going to be – it's going to have implications. So I'm going to say the Chargers right now, I'm going to say the Chargers are going to win. Be yeah. mad at me if you want to. Mm-hmm. I'm just calling it like I see it. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I think down the stretch here, whether even if they're not in a playoff hunt, I, I think that it, if even if they're not, they, they love nothing else but to play spoiler against an AFC West rival. Uh, it's a lightweight road game, but I just think this is one of those games. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about our pick, my pick so far. And I would have this as a win, but one of these wins I predict is not going to go that way. And mm. so I'm going to kind of, again, second guess myself. And I'm marking this as an L. I'm changing my original prediction from a win to an L uh, against the Chargers. And, and that's really based on no logic or analysis, just a, a really a matter of timing. And um, the Raiders kind of giving up one that they should win. Uh Let's move on. Final week of the season here. Week 17, we get to close out the season against Denver, uh, December 29th in Denver. Okay. Mile high, all that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and kick this one off. I'm really tempted here to give us the the win. Um, and you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to give us a win. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say the Denver Broncos at this point have completely packed it up for the rest of the season. Okay. The cold air and, and the altitude notwithstanding, I just think Denver really they're, they're they're playing for nothing at this point. I think John Elway's job is on the line. I think they've already mailed it in and and I you know every reason why the Broncos might spoil this game at this point it, it's a non-factor. Mm. Just based on where the team's at, the caliber of their talent, and their headspace. So I'm going to go ahead and stay positive and say we close out the season uh, with a win against the Denver Broncos. Uh, and regardless of what happens playoff wise, we end on a good note and we head into Vegas 2020 thinking, you know what, this team made strides. We took our bumps, but we made progress this year. And I'm excited for the Raiders in 2020. Che, what do you think? Uh, you, had mean, this, you had this as an L, by the I way. Have it, yeah, I have it as an L. And um, <clears throat> as much as I want to change it, I'm going to stick to the L. I'm going to stick to the to the to the loss just because of the factors that you mentioned. We got the altitude, we got the cold, we got a quarterback who hasn't performed well in the cold. Even though I'm trying to get him to perform well against the Chiefs in yeah. Kansas City, um, yeah, and and a team that that kind of has an idea as to what we want to do against them, right? Um, that being said, they had an idea what we were going to try to do against them in the first game, too, and we ran the <laughs> ball right down their fucking throats. Yeah. Um, so I expect them to do the same, but somehow, some way, we usually have some fucking ridiculous turnover mm-hmm. in the cold weather, mm-hmm. whether it's a fucking, like, ball that comes loose as fucking car tries to fucking hold his pass back or something stupid happens yeah. like that bro and okay. that usually costs us the game in those in those kind of games um so I, i'm gonna keep it as an l um i hope that i'm wrong i really do hope that i'm wrong i hope that you're you're fucking right on that mm-hmm. um but uh yeah i'm gonna keep the l dog i'm gonna keep the l close out with the l all right sorry uh k man it's on you last last prediction for the season man you get to wrap this up for us uh, Denver Broncos, week 17, December 29th, in the cold. What do you got? Oh, man, this is, um, this is, this is a hard one for me because I want to say we're going to win because we should win. We're a better team. Yeah. Um, but it is in the cold, Derek Carr. Uh, no matter what, what everybody says or want to say or whatever, he does not play well in the cold. Che just said that, and I, I, I agree with him. I'm going to say we lose, man. Okay. <laughs> Plus, on top of that, what are we at? Like eight and two for the rest of the year? So we got to lose more than two games. Come on now. We're going <laughs> to. We not if that was the case, we would have beat Green Bay today. We wouldn't have had three turnovers in the red zone. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We're not gonna beat Denver in Denver. Not in the altitude, the cold weather, 
Derek Carr don't play good in cold weather. You know, unless, you know, unless we lather up Josh, Josh Jay, I, I just don't know. A loss. Mark me as a, a, a for a loss on that one. All right, fair enough. Let's wrap this up really quick. So let's start here. I'm on the left-hand column. Um, down the stretch, man, I, looking a lot different than where I had us. I think uh, post draft, I had us going actually with nine wins, um, and I, I, I later quickly, I think the following week, reeled that back to eight. But here in our late season prediction, uh, mid season prediction, I have us at ten wins, ten and six. Surprising myself. Che has us at twelve, twelve and four. That's a playoff team. That's a juggernaut going to the playoffs. And uh, Kane, probably the most realistic outlook for all of us, nine and seven, which is about exactly right where you had us when we started the season. So in our conversation, so Kane, man, um, kind of finish out there, really kind of sticking to your guns, whether you knew you were doing so or not. It just tells me that your predictions are true and straight from the heart and um, you're not really budging there. So. 10, 12, and 9. That's your spread on the Pillaging Podcast. It could be any of those. But that's far more optimistic than I think any three of us would have said if you just asked us for the raw number after today's game. 12 and 4, though. My, you said mine's coming up at 12 and 4. Yeah. We already lost this one. Yeah. So we're not counting this one anymore, right? So we already have three, and then I got two more losses. Yeah. So that will be 11 and 5. Right? Um, no, I have it in there. You had us winning against the Broncos. Uh, you had us losing. Our what win- I'm saying is, is, is going from predictions, the predictions for the rest of the season, oh, the, based yeah. off of the what we have, what the actual record is. Your right? your original prediction was ten wins. Yeah, that was my original. But what I'm saying is, mm-hmm. the what the games have panned out up until now. Oh yeah, right. Mm-hmm. We already have three losses, and I have two more in addition to that. Yeah. So it would be eleven and five. Okay. With the amended predictions. What we have is winning against the Texans, the Lions, the Chargers, the Bengals. The oh, you pulled back that one against the Jets, right? Did I have that wrong? You said huh? No, no, no. Nothing's 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 wrong as far as what you put down. What I'm saying is, is mm-hmm. that your your the predictions. Yeah, I think is what what totaled up was what I had originally, and obviously I was wrong on some of the games that we lost. These are all changed, right? So there's three wins. There's three losses right there in the red already up until this week, right? Mm-hmm. To the Packers. Mm-hmm. And then two more. That's five. So he's saying he got us for the last ten games. We're going eight and two. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's, right? There's something wrong there on the map. It's math. not calculating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My bad, man. I don't mean to complicate things over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so 10, hey, you 11, know what, and 9. Though, but going over those predictions like we just did mm-hmm. and really just sinking our teeth into them, I believe that the, I believe 11 and 5, 10, you know, we, we had what, 9, 10, 11? Yeah, I believe yeah, any yeah. one of those could happen. Yeah. And you know why? Because the offense is that good. The offense is that good. You just cannot make mistakes like you did today. Right. You, you can't do that. You're not that good of a team collectively to overcome those types of mistakes. So, you know, with that said, we're a good enough offense that we could win nine, ten, or eleven games at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. We very well could. If, 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 even if the defense just play, bend but don't break, I, I, that's all we need. The offense is good enough to win that many games. Yep. Yep. I agree, man. I I can't disagree with that. We we we've, we've shot ourselves in the foot a lot of these games, man. Even the even you can even say that with the Chiefs game, man. The the lack of of movement in the other three quarters, as far as the offense went, mm-hmm. um, we hold we till to till till a very realistic perspective, man. We hold our own future, right? We hold we hold our. our mm-hmm. Our progress, control in our, own our own hands. destiny. Yeah, we control our own destiny, dog. So, sure. if uh, if we can limit those mistakes, if we can limit turnovers, we can limit, you know, just fucking whatever it is. If it's a fucking player not knowing what the fucking play call is, or just those things, those simple things, right? That if you're studying, if you're in your fucking playbook, and you're getting prepared for the week, you shouldn't make those things. You're a professional player, man. You're getting paid to do this shit. Mm-hmm. You got nothing else to do, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Study up and be prepared. Be ready for the fucking team that you're facing. If you do that, you cover up those mistakes. We should be in all these games. I hope Paul Gunther's telling absolutely. the same thing to his yeah. defense. Absolutely. Right yeah. yeah. You Can't, see what happened when when we fumbled the ball against the Bears. We gave up 21 points. Yeah. But yeah. we was playing a Bears offense. You're not yeah. playing, like we all said, we're not playing Chase Daniel. We're playing Aaron Rodgers. Cannot make those mistakes against the offense, against that quarterback. Right. That's all we're saying. No one's saying we garbage. No one's saying we suck. We're saying we good. You just can't make no mistakes like that. Not against that type of caliber of quarterback on the other side yeah. of the field. You know? It's mm-hmm. just that plain and simple. It was there for you to see against the Bears. Chase Daniels dropped 21 straight points on us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When we After we made that mistake. So, going forward... You already see you cannot make mistakes because the defense will just cave. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and, and if it wasn't for Derek and his, his last minute heroics, we may have lost to the Bears. So, like I said, you, you can't make mistakes. That's this, this whole theme of the season should be no more mistakes. No more boneheaded plays. Mm. Can you I, know, can, let's, can, let's, yeah. let's play within the confines of the game plan. Yeah. Let's think smart, you know, be smart, something like that. You yeah. know, uh, they're going to have to come up with something because you cannot going forward. You know, you can't turn the ball over on offense. Defense ain't going to help you. Can't argue with that. So, can't argue with that. Kane, hell of a segment this week, man. Thanks for helping us out. Thanks for coming on and sharing your opinion and uh, your, your very well-informed opinion, man. We look forward to talking to you every week. We will see you in two weeks, brother. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. I'm missing, man. I'm hey, man. I'm missing my home. I'm missing the house, man. Fiend I'm missing. It. I'm ready to get back out there. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. I need that that cold uh, Oakland air in the morning, yeah. man, to, to wake me up, bro. That seven thirty air. That yeah. seven thirty fresh air. <laughs> yeah. That uh, a little that, cello on your breath. That, that sea breeze. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that the clamato juice flowing. <laughs> and uh, that, that sweet, sweet. Sticky, ick, icky in the air. It's a nice, nice potpourri. It's a nice combination. And, of course, uh, them barbecues. Oh, yeah. That charcoal smoke. So yeah. we need that, man. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks, Kane. We'll get that W uh, when this team comes back home, bro. I'll talk to you real soon, dog. Hell yeah. Okay, brothers. Y'all right. take care. Peace. You too, dog. Pe- peace. That was a good one. Hell yeah. That was good. We covered a lot right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. We're, we're going to be gone next week, so we're trying to give you some bang <laughs> for your trying to butt. give you everything we can. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, you guys called in this week and That's gave us right. everything you could. That's right. So let's start off with some of your phone calls. We're going to skip uh, the week that we were off, and we're going to jump right into today's phone call. So go. let's go to the 561 right away. What's up, fellas? What's up, Raider Nation? Disappointing loss. Um, not much to say. Our quarterback keeps making the same dumb mistake. <laughs> you would think he would have learned from that Dallas game, but he clearly hasn't. So although he's in a second year of the offense and he feels more comfortable and this and that and the other, he still makes similar mistakes. And that's fucking unacceptable, bro. Anyways, we literally had a shot to win this game. We did. Even with Conley looking like fucking baby reindeer out there. Can't stop a motherfucker. Sorry, tackler. Really disappointing. And what the fuck is LaMarcus Joyner, bro? He's constantly either getting burnt or he's got fucking penalties. Well, I I do believe that we showed some good progress. So let's see what happens next. I'm still diehard Raider Nation. Always will be. Let's uh, let's get them, fellas. Have a good show tonight. Hey, thanks, bud. Thank you, brother. Thanks for calling in. Let's go uh, to the seven one nine. Here's Hardcore Raider. What's up, Pillagers? This is Hardcore Raider. Just got done getting our asses whooped by the Fudge Packers and uh, the <laughs> yeah. refs. So we'll talk about the game a little bit. Uh, pretty heated, you know. Winning this game, I didn't think we were going to win it, uh, but I was optimistic. I mean, if you play, if you play a team like that, I mean, you, you got to be playing on all cylinders. You got to be clicking as one unit, and you cannot make mistakes. Yep. You know, obviously, Carr fumbled the ball, 
threw an interception. I was really critical on Carr after the Chiefs and the Vikings games. I thought he played terrible. But he, he made two crucial mistakes. But at the, at the same time, our defense, like, I don't even think – I don't think they stopped the, the Packers one time until the game was already pretty much over, last minutes of the game. I mean, the defense did terrible, too. You win as a game uh, as a team, you lose as a team. Um, you know, I, I think Derek Carr played pretty damn well. Uh, you know, I like the effort. You know, it was a flashback to the Dallas game, as we all know, uh, fumbling the ball in the end zone. But, you know, what I want to say is that, um, you know, I really think Carr was – he was throwing some good balls, man. And even with Trent Brown out, I mean, if, if Trent Brown was in there, maybe Carr would have a little bit more time. But he was playing pretty effective. Just, you know, the momentum shifted, man. And it took it took the wind out of ourselves. And everybody, I know what you guys are all going to fucking say. Well, it's the referees. It's been like that since 19-fucking-02 before football was invented. Well, guess what? It doesn't make it right. I don't like getting fucked in the ass. And it doesn't fucking feel good because I don't fucking swing that way. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I do have a fucking problem with the refs. And they need to start calling this shit fair and start fucking uh, doing their job. How about fucking that? Is that too much to ask? Have, uh, you know, just do your fucking job, you know? So, yeah, we lost the game. It doesn't mean the season's over. It doesn't mean Carr is the fucking worst quarterback to ever play for the Oakland Raiders. It means we need to win as a team and lose as a team. We have a lot of young talent. And we got to figure this shit out. We move forward. We got to go face the uh, the Texans, and we'll see what we got then. But you know what? Uh, we competed to some degree. It just wasn't enough. Too many mistakes. We got to limit those mistakes. And with these young guys, uh, people got to step up. Hardcore Raider, I'm out. That's what's up. Uh, well, I don't disagree with you, Hardcore Raider. Not not at all regarding the, the officiating. Uh, Kane, I'm sorry, Kane Che called me out on Twitter a few weeks back about how. Every season, I remind y'all about uh, Greg Beekert stealing Peyton Manning's place, <laughs> uh, which I liked. Hey, bro, uh, that was that was not calling you out for doing that every season. I was thanking you, brother, for reminding us every season because that's something that we don't remember sometimes, dog. Those are good <laughs> memories, bro. Well, I got I'm a, thanking you, I got, dog. I got a chuckle out of it. I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> I just bring that up to say... The other thing I also remind you guys every single year is that in 2016, the year that everybody likes to harken back to at this point, uh, where the Raiders were rolling and we got into the playoffs, yeah. we led the, te- the, the, the league in penalties that year. Yeah. A good Raiders team will always overcome the shit penalties that we get every year. It's a penalty to wear a silver helmet. Uh, accept that. Just accept that for what it is and understand that we got to score. We got to run the ball. We got to throw the ball, you know, on average an additional 80 yards per game because of that, whether they're called for or uncalled for. It just is what it is at this point. It's what, what it, what it is being a Raider. It's always been like that. So I wish I could pull up the penalty stats for like 1976 where we run the Super Bowl and overcame uh, the obstacle of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'd like to see what our, our penalty stats were this that year. If any of you guys happen to know what it is or you find it before I, I get on the web after this show, hey, tweet it. I'm, I'm interested to see if, if that holds true. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong there. But hey, in recent memory, in recent history, uh, 2016 led the league in penalties didn't hold us back from the playoffs. So it is what it is, hardcore, but I appreciate the, the, the call out, the take, and of course the enthusiasm. Keep calling in every week. Appreciate that. Hell yeah. Uh, let's go back to the, 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 the 561 here. It looks like, uh, looks like our boy followed up. All right. So it's uh, 15 minutes later. Um, I've had a chance to calm down a little bit. <laughs> We should that should be a sound drop on the show. <laughs> it's fifteen minutes later. <laughs> I've, had, I've a had a chance to calm down a bit. <laughs> uh, don't be shocked if you heard that at the beginning of the show. That's a new segment, dog. <laughs> I watched uh, the the post game conferences, press conferences, and uh I hear Derek taking some accountability for fucking up. Mm. So, you know, <laughs> As much as we get pissed as Raiders fans, we, we got to take it. We got to take it in stride. It is an improved ball club. You can see it. Uh, defensively, we still have questions, but we can move the ball. Our offense can be potent, and we're hampered. So imagine if we were healthy. Right. So I'm going to take a step back, take a chill pill. There you go. Hit the sativa real quick. <laughs> Make sure that, that I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not jumping off the ledge, but um, 
Got no it was a winnable edge. game. Absolutely, it was a winnable game, and I'm disappointed we did not. Raider Nation is as well, but I'm sure we'll play hard. We'll keep going. I wouldn't be surprised if we beat the Texans next week. We're a good team. We're just going to keep pushing. Our run game looks good. Josh Jacobs is a shit. Waller is a shit. And Carr, for a few mistakes, he played really, really well. So, good night. Again, have a good show. You guys are awesome. I'm Chalad out. There you go. And uh, the Sativa's calming me down. <laughs> Interesting uh, choice there with Sativa. Uh, Bobby, correct me if I'm wrong, but after a loss, I re- recommend a heavy, heavy Indica uh, just to mellow out. Maybe uh, drown yourself in some snacks. <laughs> um, but hey man you do you if the sativa is the medicine you need hit that sativa um, I like that though I, I like that you called back and you followed up man that you added some time to think about it I appreciate that I we, s- we gotta and we gotta we gotta go ahead and take that fucking segment dog because if we don't the ladies of darkness are over here on the chat talking about how they're gonna steal it if we don't man the 15 minutes later <laughs> <laughs> it's 15 minutes later <laughs> and I calm down I like that uh, you know what, ladies? Run with that. Run with that. As a producer over here, my 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 notes. I got too many segments. <laughs> Run with that. I'll send you the uh, send you the sound drop. All right, let's go to the three hundred three. Oh, what's the weather in Colorado today? Kenny Che, happy Sunday. Giving you a call from Brisk. Brisk, Colorado, fall about sixty degrees. Nice. Anyways. Nice. Well, you know what you know what we thought to. Oh, Mike with the door holes on back? this roster yeah. on the defensive okay. end. Uh, we knew coming into this game we were going to have to score touchdowns, uh, do some ball control, keep Aaron Rodgers, you know, off the field. But man, mistakes! Mm. I don't want to hear anything about the rest. You know, the rest suck, and you just have to overcome the rest. That's yep. the bottom line yeah. in football. Yep. Great teams overcome challenges. We're not a great team, and we can't overcome a lot of these self-inflicted mistakes. Now, look, it's well-precedented that I have been on record to say I love Derek Carr. However, today showed Carr's limitations, right? He is not an elite quarterback. I don't think he'll ever be an elite quarterback. I think you can win with Derek. But holy shit, deja vu today. When he went... When he was running towards the goal line, I just, I swear to God, I stood up and said, just don't fumble it. Just don't fumble it. And what did he do? And when he fumbled it, I was like, that's Green Bay. You can say what you want. Yes, the defense saw, sucked. Okay? But that play, with the fact that Green Bay got the ball, drove down the field, and we knew they got the ball again at after halftime, that was a big play in the game. Momentum. Yes, there is such a thing as momentum, and then, of course, the INT in the second half. The game was well over by then, but, you know, Carr played well at times today, right? Moved the ball, no receivers, got the tight ends involved. But, man, those aren't mistakes that you should be making as a six-year veteran. So what, can we win a Super Bowl with Derek Carr? I, I'm, I'm asking Raider Nation this question. Can we win a Super Bowl? Does the team have to be absolutely perfect? Or would anyone with their right mind be mad if we moved on from Carr, got a couple draft picks, and drafted a stud QB and, you know, like a Russell Wilson, uh, like what Seattle did with Russell Wilson, right? Surrounded, you know, surrounding him with play, you know, with playmakers, great running game, a killer defense, and then we get a rookie QB on a five-year cheap deal. Um, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I'm cool with keeping Carr. I'm cool with moving on from Carr. I don't think Carr's the biggest problem, but he's not. He didn't help us today in a game where if we would have scored right there, it was a game. But anyways, on the Houston, I had us losing today, no matter what. Um, I still say we're seven and nine, eight and eight. Hopefully, we can bounce back, and our defense pass rush back end is not looking good. This is three hundred three, and I- out, out. Yeah, um, can we win a Super Bowl with Carr? I can't answer that question. Can we win a Super Bowl with this defense? No, cannot. No. So that's where we're at right now. That's without question. That's without question. Here, uh, the 203. This is brand new. Yo, what's up, Raider Nation? Pillagers. Oh, Johnny. Jay, Kane, Kenny. Just win, Johnny. 
little message for Raider Nation. <laughs> well, faith no more. Is he saying he has no more faith in his team? <laughs> Come on, Johnny. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, Hashtag man. Raider Nation. It's one of those days, though. <laughs> All right, we get it. You're a big Mike Patton fan, and so am I. And so am I. Johnny, we love you, bro. Uh, let's go to the 402 here. Um, this call came in at about 4.30 this afternoon. All right. Hey, guys. Cameron Eckman here. Uh, big Raiders fan. Um, first time calling in. I uh, actually just stumbled across your show about a couple weeks ago after the London game and uh, really got uh, really like what you guys um talk about your insights, um, your show in general. It's set up really well, and just keep up the good work. I really like it. Um, Thank you, man. But uh, my insights on the game today, uh, you know, kind of kind of hit, hit and miss. I, I, uh, I'm a farmer, so I uh, I listened to the game in the tractor a little bit today. uh crazy. a little harvest. I uh, watched it a little bit of the first half on my phone. Um, but uh, really... Like it, like you guys said, death uh, death by a thousand paper cuts yeah. for sure. Um, once we got off that script, it was uh, pretty much pretty much a done deal. And Aaron Rodgers is a dude, man. He's uh, he's really good. Uh, definitely see Green Bay coming out of the NFC um, this year for the Super Bowl. I think they're definitely a, a contender with that new offense they got running with the floor. But uh, anyway, I think. It's pretty much a wash game. I, I don't think I don't take too much stock into it. Like I said, uh, I think Carr played all right. Um, definitely that fumble killed our all our momentum of the game. Uh, I definitely think he's got to clean that crap up. Um, can't be diving with one hand. He should have learned by now. He can't do that stuff, especially when he's diving from the three yard line. But uh, cleans that up. I think he did. He played a really great game. Managed the game well. Um, threw that interception there at the end, but that was pretty much a force. You know, he's just trying to trying to get something going, score quick so we can get the ball back. Um, what I didn't like was the defense. Obviously, our pass coverage is terrible, and I don't think it's going to get much better. We just don't have the guys. I mean, Darion Conley is, is pretty much uh, not a good corner when it comes to tackling. Um, I mean, he's afraid to tackle, it seems, and he's not very good at it. He's pretty good at man coverage, but other than that, I mean... He's all right. I, I just don't see him as a front-line corner, and I don't know if it's too early to say, but I, I just haven't seen much from him. Uh, Daryl Worley got banged up today, so we had to kind of go to some, with Mullen and, and Lawson a little bit. And, I mean, they're just inexperienced and don't really know Gunther's system all that well. So I don't see it getting much better. Carl Joseph's horrendous in pass coverage, too. Um, definitely can come up and, and lay down the wood, uh, I mean, on a running play and have a good tackle, but uh, tackle for loss. But, I mean, Green Bay's offense, they were just gunning us all game, kind of like reminiscing to that Kansas City game earlier in the year. And pretty much uh, pretty much how that went. Um, really loved this, what I saw from uh, Josh Jacobs, man. He's a dude, and he's going to be a dude to come. I just hope Green Hey guys, Cameron Eckman here from uh, Iowa. First time calling in to you guys. Uh, really like the show. Um, Looks like maybe he, he phoned that back in again. It got caught off there. Really good call. Please call in again and just kind of like bottom line it. You know, I think a lot of people, it's weird. There's like this weird sort of, um, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting this on you. Uh, there's like this kind of weird contradiction where everyone's like, oh, yeah, I had this as an L. But then they're jumping off the ledge anyways. Right? I'm seeing a lot of that on Twitter. I mean, this is not our caller. Our caller is not that person. Right. But, you know, are the Raiders a playoff contender this year? No, they're not. I never said they were. Chain never really said they were. Despite his like early season prediction, I think we were both kind of like, yeah, you know, borderline man, it's bo- borderline, borderline. borderline. And, and you're you're in the same division as the Chiefs. And at that time, when we made a prediction, the Chargers, who also looked like a contender, you know, so is a non playoff contender going to go into Green Bay and beat the Packers? No, they're not. So just temper your expectations a little bit. That's, I don't want to. We had a lot of calls. I don't want to go too far, but right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair, bro. Uh, so the 805 here, we got a short call. What's up, Pillaging Podcast? It's 
Andrew. Hold on, Andrew, really quick. This is, again, not on you. This is entirely on Google with the transcription of your call. <laughs> says, what's up, Hitler Gene Podcast? <laughs> um, what? This podcast is in no way affiliated uh, with, no. with Hitler or the Nazi regime. I just, a- absolutely just not. make that clear. Absolutely not. Google, get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, God for damn. real, get your shit together. God damn. <laughs> what's up, Hitler Gene Podcast? <laughs> it's Andrew C. 805. Love y'all podcast. Just a couple keys to the game. Um, defense, defensive backs played like shit. Yeah. Yep. Derek Carr, if it wasn't for that fumble out of the end zone, I think the game would have been a different game. Yeah. Different offense, whole team probably would have been a different game if that whole fumble out of the end zone wouldn't have been, you know, called back. Um, penalties. We can't lose the penalties. And uh that's about it. You know? Well on to the Texans. Go Raiders. On to the Texans, man. Can't can't disagree with that. Yeah. It's on to the Texans though. And on where we march. Nine seven zero. Hey fellas, I had to call back this week. This G-Bot. uh week was um, just uh, getting away from everything we're doing. Where is Josh Jacobs? They're supposed to pound the rock. What happened? Waller and Jacobs was the key to winning. Why did we get away from it? Derek Carr looking timid again. I mean, this seems to be a conversation that we all have every three or four weeks. But it's like normal, so let's, uh, have to get better next week, like usual. So, just win, baby. G-Paw out. Hey, Google, stop. Yeah, Google, stop, bro. You need to shut it down, Google. Yeah, stop with those horrible translations, too. Uh, G-Paw, yeah. rarely, rarely do I disagree with you. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't think Derek Carr looked very timid today. I thought thought he, he remained pretty poised despite everything that, that went through there. And I don't think we got away from all. Waller actually got involved after the first quarter, kind of mid to later in the game. So Yeah, I, you know, you look at the stats and the, and the numbers tell you different, right? They tell you Jacobs was was definitely involved in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was times where maybe you said like, wait, wait, why isn't Jacobs getting the ball here? Or there was a few of those occasions, but overall, we moved the ball really well, man. Going back to what we said earlier, two punts. Okay, we didn't get stopped too many times. The times that we got stopped, it was due to our own mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, we moved the ball really well against a very good defense. This is a defense that's, that's you know, on the higher end of the NFL. Um, not as strong against the run, but definitely good overall. And we shut down pretty much all aspects of their defense Yeah. in terms of pressures, sacks, um, you know, tackles for loss. Um, and we ran the ball down their throws pretty successfully, man, with, with multiple running backs. Okay, uh, like I said, D. Wash had a couple runs that were pretty decent too. Um, so I'm not really mad. I don't really feel like we didn't stick to our game plan or that we didn't do what we have in the past. We just did something that we didn't do in the past. Yeah. Was turn the ball over. Turn the ball. The last over. couple of weeks, we didn't turn the ball over. We didn't lose. We didn't shoot ourselves in the foot, and we didn't lose time of possession. Um, and we did this week, and we see the result of it, man. We lose this fucking game because we didn't help ourselves out. That's it. That's it. Comes yeah. down to it, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, you're, when your running back, star running back gets nicked up and you're down by, you know, two two plus scores, you get away from the run game, you know, and, and Chase Wright, Washington stepped in, did what he could, you know, like 29 yards on, on limited carries and yeah. I, I think a pass catch too, so. Late, late, late in the game, if you're down so many scores, man, you're going to go away from the running mm-hmm. game. That doesn't tell you what you did early in the game. I think early on, while the game was still close, we stuck to the game plan. Yeah. You know, that Green, was that that goes without question. Green Bay below average against the rush, above average against the pass, top tier in the red zone, and they do a good job creating turnovers. So definitely no slouch on defense. Not, not like uh, Green Bay of, re- of the recent past. Yeah. Let's go to the 209 here, Central Valley. Unfortunately, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if Derek Carr was baby Jesus, <laughs> we'd have to punt that motherfucker to the next dimension. Oh, okay. Oh. This is AJ, humorous fiend. I'm done with this quarterback. I've been done with them. <laughs> Some of y'all still want to defend them. I get it. The whole restart shit. 
it, it's just it's just bad. It's it's not looking up. Uh, you know, you can hang your hat on him probably, you know, playing well a few more times and God forbid that happens towards the end of the season. Uh but I'm gonna give John Gruden a give uh Gruden a pass because when he first got here my whole thing was well he says he failed if he didn't get Derek Carr right. Well maybe Derek Carr can't get Derek Carr right. I mean Gruden called a masterful game today. Uh, I think Gruden's getting his mojo back. I think we got a hell of a running back. I think we got a defense. Anybody that wants to blame the game on the defense today has no idea what kind of defense we have. They were playing good enough. If we don't keep scoring with an Aaron Rodgers, we don't keep scoring with Des- Deshaun Watson, what's going to happen? It's not a surprise, okay? Don't, <laughs> don't, don't cry foul and be like, oh, well, 78 percentage completion rate and Derek Carr's uh, the man of God. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. It's Derek Carr's fault. We'll never be more than a mediocre team unless we get a quarterback that can lead us from behind to a victory. That Derek Carr is gone from 2016 and he's never coming back. I don't care how many wide receivers you get him. If you wait another six fucking years, it's going to be the same thing over and over and over. That was AJ Humorous Fiend. All right. You can catch more from AJ at theraderramble.com. Follow him on Twitter. Uh, he's a stand up comedian. He's got jokes, but he's very <laughs> serious. Very, very serious yeah, on that call. He's very serious, man. Yeah. He's upset. <laughs> very upset. Your boy's upset, though. Your boy's upset. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go to the 909 here. Roadmap. What up, villagers? It's uh, me, the Pomona Raider. Probably nice. going to be the, one of the last calls that maybe make it in. But uh, I just want to say, you guys keep your heads up. We lost to a 5-1 and one team. Uh, now they're 6-1. and one, So, you know, we were in it. It should have been 17-14 going into the half. Yeah. Uh, until Carr fumbled that ball out of the end zone. That was, fuck that. They didn't call for the last one last year. I was at the Cowboy Raider game in Oakland when he just did that shit and the place erupted with excitement because we thought we won. I had to give it to him saying that, um, you know, we'll, we'll play to win the game. So he was trying to play, he was trying to make a play to win the game. Yeah. And well, this one, he didn't have to do that. Second and one on goal line, fuck it. Angled up the middle and shit. Or our tight ends, and I've got three of them, Trey studs. But it is what it is and shit. We'll go down 21 10. And we still were throwing punches with them. Um, the second half, it goes 28 10 because they got the ball back right away. So, um, but, I mean, guys, I mean, we got to really think about it. You know, they they wanted to give Carr some weapons to evaluate him. Brown, retired, out of the league. Tyrell Williams, this Frank injury, could be out a few more weeks. So there's your one and two, you know what I'm saying? So if we had a viable receiving option, um, you know, maybe it would be a, a different story and shit. But we don't have that right now. We have a zero pass rush. These guys over there fucking rubbing backs on fucking trees like it's a bear fucking with an H on his back or something. And shit. They fucking, I love Max Crosby, but man, every now and again, him and Morrow, they spin around and they rub their fucking ass on the guy and shit. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, playing touch butt. But either way, and shit, we need some pass rushers. I saw Adam Schefter or one of those guys say that we're going to be players at the trade deadline looking for linebackers and pass rushers. I hope so. Let's make something happen. Our schedule is about to get easier. And, uh... You know, don't just let's just keep our heads up, guys, because um, that's a damn a damn good team that we beat that we lost today too. That um that uh we we pretty much hung with. You know what I'm saying? I know the score is what the score is, but the chips were against us at the end of the second half, so it's all good. Uh, I'm looking forward to play. I think we will play the Lions next week, so fuck them. Texas. Bounce back, Raiders, and I'm out. Lions in two weeks, though. Lions in two weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, good call, good call. Uh, I want to shout out Max Crosby for doing the uh, discount double check sack yeah, celebration. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That was tight. <laughs> that was tight. Maybe save that one for the end of the game, Max. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe save that one for the end of the yeah, game. He was fired just... up, man. No, you know what? Back to back to uh, uh, Pomona's uh, comment about uh, about that play. You know what? You know what bothered me about the fumble, the play where Carr fumbled, um, was Waller was not in. And uh, I know Waller just had made the big play, but Waller should have been in there, bro. There's no reason why you do not have Waller mm-hmm. when you're on the goal line 
in the fucking game. And that's one of the things. Like they panned to the sidelines. Waller's on the sidelines, and then we go to, the, and they're running the play. And I'm like, just automatically, bad things start going through. Yeah, like, yeah. we don't have Waller. It's almost like a given what we had, like what our options are. Right, we have. A limited amount of options with that when Waller's not on the field. You know that he's a big threat. On the goal line, you want your biggest threat on the field because he opens shit up for everybody else. You saw how Foster Moreau has, has fucking benefited from having Waller out there Definitely. at the same time. Definitely. Okay, Foster has more TDs. Or does he have more TDs? Or he's, maybe they're tied up now. He's like two or three. Yeah, two two or three TDs, and now Waller has two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um but he was benefiting from Waller being out there because everyone's worried about Waller. Everyone's keyed in on Waller. And even then, he's still making people pay. Okay? So there's no reason why he shouldn't have been in there. One TD, huh? One TD, yeah. One TD. Um, there's no reason why he shouldn't have been in there. That's That was the first thing that caught my eye, and then fucking that shit happened. And yeah. Yeah. It went it went to shit. It went to shit real quick. But that's why. that's we We can't. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot, man. Derek Carr, listen, I know the last few callers have been <laughs> a little angry at Carr. Uh, I ain't mad at you guys, all right? I ain't mad at you guys. But, you know, your boy Kenny made the point that he, he was kind of hard on him against Dallas, mm-hmm. right? And now he's kind of he's kind of taking it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. The guy's trying to make a play. He's making a mistake in trying to do – what he what he thinks we want, right? We want him to fucking play balls to the wall and fucking try to win these games. That's what he's trying to do. But he's not he's not doing it in a secure way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately we've seen now twice car you put that ball out in one fucking hand and the ball goes out through the end zone not attached to your hand, dog. Okay? Mm-hmm. Get that fucking ball with two hands and dive if you want to dive car, but don't fucking be putting that ball out there it's a habit you do it every single time you run out of bounds you do it every single time and the defense knows by now that this is your calling card as you're running out of bounds you stretch the ball out with one hand and fucking try to inch out a couple yard a a yard an extra yard as you're going out of bounds not when you're in the red zone dog okay Mm. please please knock that hat that's a habit that you got to kick okay so to that extent i can't argue with with the guys that have been coming down on him you got to kick that habit, bro. On the goal line, you lose the ball out of bounds. You know what's fucking happening, okay? That's a touchback. We can't have that shit no more, okay? But I appreciate your effort, bro. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Cristo. 559. Five, Amen. What's going on, my Raider brothers? Long time, no talk. Uh, this is Central Valley Raider. So let's take a minute to, you know, walk away for a minute and, and think about this game, man. And uh, Derek Carr did it again. <laughs> I mean, I know we, we bitch and complain about we need more more, more ballsy plays, more energy plays. But I think the fans, and if we're speaking about me personally, I need the more deep balls. I need more chances. Not the same bullshit where he's scrambling where he can he's three yards, five yards out, and he's trying to get to the corner. Man, just run the ball out and be on the two. Mm-hmm. It was second down or second and goal. We still had two more to go. The dude reaches out again with his left hand. In the same scenario, he's afraid of getting lit up, so he's stretching and he fumbles. And I'm gonna tell you right now, man. That changed the whole complexity of the game. So, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I'm sure that's how he's feeling. He's trying to please the fans. He hears the fans. He's a Central Valley boy. Uh, so I know he knows he's hearing this. He's hearing the complaint. But, man, you got to be smart. That changes the whole game. That changed. That flipped yeah. it 21 points. And then you think about it. We got in the end zone three more times. That's 21 on top of the 27. I mean, that would have been, what, 48 to 45. We would have won that by a field goal. Just thinking, doing the math. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, man. Just one play. Can't believe that that should just set this whole game back. So it is what it is. We'll move on to Houston. Um, The other thing, 
we got some whack ass DBs, man. Mm -hmm. um, Conley, that dude, that dude does not look like he has no interest in playing for the Raider Nation. Honestly, every time I see him, I'm looking at his back. You know, he's getting killed, getting burnt. I mean, he just looks whack, man. We need to get rid of him. Put that dude Isaiah um, that we had recruited and just give him a shot. I mean, what the hell, man? Um, but just Conley just needs to, maybe he needs to be a backup nickel DB, man. Because the guy doesn't want to come up and hit. Just doesn't seem passionate about the game. Wardy got beat today. For every two times he got beat, he came back with a good play. So it's a give and take with him. But uh, other than that, man, uh, that's all I got. We'll move on to Houston. Uh, che, I ain't drinking really nothing. nothing. Uh oh, got cut off there. Uh, thanks for calling back in, Central Valley. It's been a while since since we yeah. heard you, but I have to disagree with you on a couple of points. Uh, the fumble does not change the complexion of the game. Your defense giving up 75 yards in under one minute and then coming back after the halftime, after you've rested, after you supposedly made adjustments and rolling over and giving up another seven points uh, and putting your offense down 18 points in a game that your offense had you win changes the complexion of the game. Your offense will make mistakes. Your defense has to back you up, and that's where it happened. Carb was not playing defense on those two drives. I'm sorry. The fumble is what it is, but the field position wasn't all that bad. You need to stand in there. Secondly, Conley had a terrible game this 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 week. But what do you do? You bench him, move Warley to number one, and bring up Trayvon Mullen. That's going to fix things. That's not going to fix things. The Raiders are in the mix right now. Despite one loss, you guys are overreacting. I'm sorry to say it. you're overreacting. You're panicking, saying these things, calling for people to be benched, people to be traded, putting this all on car. Again, it's another overreaction. Just after the Bears win two weeks ago, y'all had us going to the playoffs. Patrick Mullins was injured. Uh, AFC West is going to be a route. The Raiders got this running away. You, I'm not just putting this all on you with Central, but you guys are just over-emotional, overreacting right now. This is one week. This is one game against a, a perennial player playoff team with a Hall of Fame quarterback at the helm and a, and a pretty damn good defense and we're on the road uh, y'all are overreacting on this I'm sorry I just got to say it. I got to be clear um, no cap on you Central Valley Raider this is me completely unfiltered no character no jokes no nothing you're overreacting that's all I got to say hmm? I ain't going to disagree it's flop Jesus right. <laughs> I've been working my ass off all day just to hear a bunch of fucking bitch-ass Packers fans talking about how they fucking raped us today. Oh, 42 to 24. Jesus Christ, man. What the fuck? Were we playing a high school team or what? It was ridiculous. That's, that's just not good football. Uh, of course, there's a fumble. There's always a fumble. I don't know why, but just God, fuck, man. I'm just so angry about this. What a way to end it. You know, everything was going well. I was getting overtime, and then Raiders just go ahead and fuck my day up by taking a big <laughs> L right in the booty hole, man. God, uh, bless, dang it, whatever the fuck, man. Just horrible, horrible, horrible. Ugh. Oh. I just got to get up early as fuck in the morning and repeat today. Oh, damn it. I'm not even going to watch the low lights of our fucking game. That's pathetic. How do you let Aaron Rodgers with no fucking receivers just go ahead and run game on you? Run a fucking train on us. Oh, not a good game. I don't know. I didn't see everything, so maybe I missed some good parts, but when your team loses by fucking 20 or more points, that's not good, period. I don't care who you are. Wop out. Slightly depressed. Still motivated, but slightly depressed. <laughs> Chin up, Wapo. Chin up. Got nine games left on the season. It's not over yet. Uh, you'll understand what happened with Aaron Rodgers today when he's putting on that gold jacket in a few years. Yeah. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, all right, so we got a couple more calls here. I know this caller segment's going long, uh, but hey, man, we're gonna hear you guys out. Yeah, yeah. Pete. Oh shit. Okay, lady didn't ask me what my name was. Oh, Kenny Che Kane. What's up, Pillages? This is Pete. How we doing? I hate to call him late. Been late to the chat tonight. Been whatever. So shouts out to my boy Bobby, Sean, 
Vinny, Doc, all the boys out in the hood, you know, out in the chat right now, Shorty D, I ain't see you around, just when Johnny, everything like that. So I'm listening right now with Kane's Corner, and, like, I hate to call in during the fucking show, but <laughs> here's my old deal. <clears throat> we all got a lot of takeaways from today, and uh, I'm just going to try and keep it short and sweet and this and the other thing. This is my observation. Is this, we stay competitive, we've been competitive, and we've done everything that we got to do. But, look, man, we lose two good quarterbacks, yeah. okay? Case in point, Patrick Mahomes, who has the ability to come back from behind. Aaron Rodgers, what he did with us, Tyson sliced us. Paul Gunther, I love you, dog, but we can't, like, I like what Paul E.G. is doing. That's what I'm saying. We don't have Vontez. We don't have whatever. But we don't have a pass rush unless we blitz the Marcus Joyner. And Carl Joseph can't play free safety in nickel corner and middle linebacker at the same time. Every time I saw the ball go to a running back on a screen or a tight end, he was screaming downfield. Didn't always make the tackle, but he was always there, and I don't know where anyone else is coming with that. Next point is this about the offense. We were in cruise control with Derek Carr because, no pun intended, that's what he does best. Just, you know, manage it, do what you got to do. But that diving pylon play, he was trying to win us the game, and that interception to Darren Waller, like that intended pass to Darren Waller that ended up in an interception. There are about 15 to 16 other quarterbacks in the league that would have made that same pass, and it would have been worse. So, because I, I thought it had the assailment. So, it's just one of those things, pillagers. Like, just got to say this, we lost to a good team again. We're playing a good team next week. And this is sad, like I – Paul Gunther's playing Ask Madden 24-7 on the fucking defense. Damn. We got to get out of the nickel. We got we got to keep stop butts and safeties, safeties. And not only that, but we need a linebacker. You know, Vontez was what Vontez was, but like, I'm sorry, but like when a running back came out in the flat, and then all of a sudden, like you know, the corner has to come up or the safety has to come up to try and help it. Man, it's it is what it is. Like it's it's not good. That's not what defenses do. Like we got we got. We're, we're ragging on Comedy right now, but he's probably playing like four different positions right now, as well as being our number one corner. And I don't know what the hell a Marcus Joyner is doing. And at the same time, with that, I'm gonna leave with this: is uh, every time we lose, we usually have this uh, amongst the pillagers, amongst Raider Nation. Is a uh, there's uh, one half of us that looks at mock drafts and says this, says that, says we need to get rid of. Hey, what's up, y'all? Sorry for the two-parter two weeks in a row. Kenny Che Kane, what's up, Pillages? This is Pete. <laughs> so what I was saying last week, like last call, excuse me, is uh, this. Like every time we lose and people try to rag on people, I mean, Raider Nation tries to rag on other fans for like, you know, going to the mock draft saying we got to replace this, we got to replace that. Well, we could have been smarter in free agency this year because this was the year of the linebacker. That was the point I tried to make in the last call with C.J. Mosley, Quan Alexander, everything like that. <laughs> We don't have that right now. And for anyone who wants to rag on mock drafts or, you know, saying, like, you know, paying attention to what our next two first-round draft picks are going to do, um, look, I'll defend it. I am a draft nerd. I love college football. And you know what? Like, uh, we just got to pay attention. We got a bright future ahead of us. We're moving into a new stadium. We're going to do what we got to do. But we still stay competitive, and we just got diced up by a good quarterback. So, in essence, that's what I'm going to leave with. All right, y'all. Thanks for having me on. Sorry for calling in late. Have a good one. Peace. So now that's a good call. That's an no. educated call. It's a great call, man. Uh, he didn't let anybody off the hook, but uh, he's not jumping off the ledge either. So, <clears throat> Pete, man, Pete's just a hell of a caller, man. Every week, I look forward. Yeah, you know, I feel like I learn something from his calls too every week. So, Pete, thanks for calling in. Appreciate that. Another thing, man, on that interception. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but um, Waller got tangled up. Defenders' feet got tangled up in Waller, and Waller goes down. Okay, I don't know if that's a PI or not. I mean, it could just be. Uh, you could it could go either way. It's honestly, it could, it could go either way. Honestly, right? Mm -hmm. But Waller doesn't go down on that play and has enough enough time to turn around and go up in the air for that ball. The outcome might be different because we know Darren Waller can get up, and he's he's got the height, man. He's got the height advantage over any fucking DB that's that's defending him. Um, the outcome could have been different. You could have seen Darren Waller leaving with a third touchdown or the second touchdown of the game at that time. Um, but, you know, that's how the chips fall, man. 
Shit yeah. happens, dog. Shit happens. Shit happens. We lost by more than seven. So that's right. Yeah, it that's is true. what it is. That's true. Oh, right, yeah. Two more calls. These are short ones. Uh, let's go to the seven seven three here. I've been watching these games, and it looks like no quarterback is consistent. Look at Dak Prescott. Mm. He plays terrible one week. For a couple weeks, he plays terrible. The next week, he looks like an all-star. You look at um, Wentz. Sometimes he looks good. Sometimes he looks bad. Who else? Daniel Jones is looking really good at the beginning. Now he's looking mediocre. There's no consistent quarterbacks. I mean, look at someone like Sean Watson. He was like, he was supposed to be MVP. Russell Wilson was the MVP, and then they stunk it up today. None of these quarterbacks can play a consistent season. They're all up and down. I'd like to see which quarterback has been the most consistent. For me, it's probably Aaron Rodgers. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Take it easy. Uh, I would argue that Aaron Rodgers has been more inconsistent than Russell Wilson. Yeah. I'd say Russell Wilson against Baltimore was something to prove. Earl Thomas and that team, they came in, they had a chip on their shoulder. It's one bad game. doesn't make him inconsistent. I'd say Tom Brady's playing at a pretty damn high level. I think Mahomes, even with the hobbled ankle, threw three touchdowns in his last appearance. Uh, there's a lot more consistency in this league. But you have a point. There's a, there is a lot of inconsistent play. But there's also a lot of young quarterbacks in this league right now, too. I think I think the the point that you make though, Doug, is is the proof that even even when you do have a good quarterback, you have to have a team around them, mm-hmm. right? If your team, if your entire team doesn't come to the game and perform as a whole, doesn't matter if you have a fucking great quarterback. It doesn't matter. It's nice that you do when you have a great quarterback on your team. You can overcome some deficits. You can overcome a fucking turnover or a mistake, whatever. But when the rest of your team doesn't show up to play, when your defense doesn't hold its ground, or your offensive players are dropping passes or whatever it may be, it's gonna be a long it's gonna be a long game no matter who you got behind the helm, bro. Mm-hmm. That's just that's just how it goes. This that's is the it. NFL, bro. Everybody here is professional players. They all get played to play to to play, and that's because they're fucking elite athletes, though. We gotta we gotta yeah. pick each other up, man. That's it. Uh last call of the night. Here we are. We made it. Seven oh four. Here it is. What's going on, Pilly? I was just calling y'all. Uh, I just found the program today. But um, I wanted to say that everybody's saying don't blame the referees, but I still blame the referees. <laughs> Call it what you want. Hey, you fucking um, they can manipulate games by um, controlling momentum with the calls. Um, they had one play where uh, they tried to say uh, – the wide receiver pushed off or something like that. It was early in that the game. That was a bullshit it call, yeah. Wide it was on Davis, right? Off. And John Gruden threw the flag. Mm-hmm. And they went and reviewed where the wide receiver did not push off at all. Yeah. And they came back and still said that he pushed off. So I know that we're supposed to overcome obstacles, but sometimes, you know, they can make situations bigger and you can't overcome those type of obstacles those are hurdles that you just can't get over and it um it's it's just a momentum killer yeah um it wasn't our greatest game <coughs> but i still like the offensive line i think the offensive line did a great job i like the running game the running game is perfect um i'm a diehard raider fan and I probably won't watch sports for the rest of the week until Sunday. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you guys a shout out. Um, thanks for being on the air. And I look forward to talking to you guys next week. All right. One. Awesome, man. Thanks they, for calling in, bro. Yeah, thanks, boss, for calling in. Thanks for finding us. Appreciate it. Look forward to hearing from you more and more in the future. Next time you call in, make sure you drop your name, man. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for calling in 704. I'm not even sure where the 704 is at. Let's look that up really quick. Here we go. Real quick to, to the point that you're making about the refs, though, man. And, and we said, you know, you got to play through the refs. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't have an effect on the game. Okay. We know that they have an effect on the game. We're just accustomed to them affecting our game all the time. Okay. So when we say you got to play through it because that's what's going to happen anyways, like you can't let the refs decide the game. 
Because we don't really have any fucking control over the goddamn refs, man. Okay, I see Bobby Wasabi over here holding up an index card. <laughs> All right. We can't control the refs. That's that's the impossible thing to do, okay? And we know that the refs like to take advantage of us most most of all, okay? It's in our history. Like your boy Kenny said, go ahead, go back. Check it out, man. Do do the facts yourself. Um, but this team in the past has proven that when it has a great team and it has a great product, it can overcome those things too, okay? And that's what we're trying to say. Like, listen, expect that the refs are going to fucking screw you over. Expect that the refs are going to fucking hold you up and they're going to kill your drives and all that kind of stuff. And play a, around play around those things, man. Make the make sure that you you're making enough plays that those plays that those calls don't affect you and don't shut you down. Um, yeah, it's gonna happen though. We're the Raiders, Raider Nation. You're used to this though. God damn you right. are used to it, unfortunately, but you're used to it. Yeah. So 704 North Carolina, by the way. So shout out to North Carolina. <clears throat> Take your shirt off. Wave it around <laughs> your head like a helicopter. Yeah. That might have been, been Peter Bob right there, though. Uh, but, yeah, call in next week, man. Drop your name. Uh, good call. That's good what's call. up. Good point, Hell yeah. Let's do some shout-outs and get the hell shout out of out. here. Shout-outs. Uh, shout-out to Dr. Doug, Coalition 6, Eddie Bangs, Emilio Paoliso. Emilio! Uh, <laughs> Zach Morris on the big mobile phone uh, saving us. By the bell. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Jack Sports, Sour Hench, Pillsbury 187. Uh, he's soft, but he'll murder your ass too. Uh, <laughs> Derek Luden, Just Win Baby 509, Caution 650, 17, Bob Trey, Oh, Meezy Sports Mave, Nicole Lucero, uh, Getsy 16, TM Fit Girl, Raider Nation for Life 012, Silver Hack, Efren M. 81, Dalton Murphy, Cameron Ekman, Beast Mode 639, Riley Reader. Uh, I almost said Riley Reed. Uh, my, my, my porn habits catching up to me. Uh, <laughs> Riley Reader, 805, Hector, uh, Silver and Black, JWB, Blackheart Silver, uh, Blackheart Silver Soul, sorry, Harrison Smith, One Nation 818, Easy Money, Eric Elledge, Robles Roach. Uh, Patrick Benefield, Barry John Williams, Cesar Garcia, Big Loud Del Toro, LX 1992, Juan Johnson, that's that Miami <laughs> Vice, <laughs> south of the border, uh, Defunk Chef Sergio Cacotaz, uh, Patrick Crimmins, Black Hole Banter, shout out to Black Hole Banter, man. Shout out, though. They've been doing this since been before we've been doing this. Yeah, hell yeah. So big respect. Thanks for the follow, guys. Um, a shout out to Chris over there, Q, and of course, James. Holding it down. Uh, Spicy North Bay, Fantasy Football Demon, Rick Baker, Roddy Castro, Joshua Sanaco, uh, Grumpy Ass Mexican, <laughs> especially today. Uh, that's like every caller we had today. Uh, <laughs> every caller was a fucking grumpy ass Mexican today, dog. Uh, shout out to you, man. Raiders 3432, uh, Sports Wednesday Podcast, Money Dog, JT21, Just Tweet Baby 78, Poopy. Shout out to Poopy. Uh, Brett Wells, uh, Fat Mountain, which is Matt Fallon's burner account. Yeah. I don't know how many times I saw that. Shit. I don't know how many times Matt's been suspended, dog. But <laughs> uh, did you wrong, man? Uh, Rene Rubalcava, OG Massa, Pro Football Betting Sports, Rosie. Uh, shout out to Michael Whetstone and Marcus Bevier. Uh, I think I'm saying your name right. And really quick before I get out of the way for Che here on YouTube. Shout out to Tony Walker, Drew Lopez, Kenny G. Uh, Tony McCoolish. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, Tenny, Kenny G's up in there, You're bro. Like a saxophone, bro. Real smooth, dog. <laughs> uh, shout out to Raider Town 75, David Nunez, uh, Sin Waters 909, uh, King Nani 517, Abel Hernandez, Danny Perez, Great Spikehead, and Cesar Espinosa. Uh, a couple follows again that came through late tonight. We'll get you guys on the next episode. Thanks again for following us on YouTube. That's what's up. Instagram, what's up? Yeah, hey, IG. We only got a few here. Uh, shout out to Roddy Castro seventy five. I saw he's in the Twitter shout outs as well. Shout out to Raider Mike one hundred and DJ five five nine. So, uh, uh, big shout outs, huge thank you to everyone that donated this week. We had a bevy of donations come through. A plethora, a plethora, if, uh, you, if you will. Uh, jefe, <laughs> could you tell me what a plethora is? <laughs> 
Oh, uh, man. You guys <laughs> were very, very generous this week. We were able to get our SSL certificate for the website. Yeah. Secured for two years. Thank you, guys. So uh, your data is safe with us. Also, we were able to upgrade our recording software, which was long overdue. Uh, so shout out to you guys and shout out to Ableton for holding us down. Um, your donations huge, man. And, and a lot of that goes out to the original pillagers that are blogging over there on PJ4F.com. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been really good. A lot of that money just went straight to effect this week. Um, so shout out to Mark Zamora, uh, Richard Lacasse, uh, Mark Soto, David and Melody, uh, and me. And um, uh Oh, yeah, and me, because I donated too. <laughs> um, and, and Michael uh, Ruggiero, um, you were you're huge this week. I appreciate our conversation that we had uh, off the air. Uh, Michael, big big part of, of why we were able to get that certificate. So, um, What's up, man? He saw me commenting on it, and he saw that, and he, and he hit me up with an email and asked how much it was and, and wanted to know if he could help uh, take care of it. So big, again, big, big shout appreciate out. Every, y'all, every, man. Everything that we do is supported by your listenings. Your listens and your donations. So again, if you want to make a donation to the show, uh, PayPal.me slash PJ4F. I wish I could send you guys something, but unfortunately, we don't control our merchandise. Uh, the least we can do is give you a shout out in a, in a show and nearly every week. So Yeah, but tune in because your boy Dan and your boy Johnny, they're going to be, uh, you know, trying to get some some stuff out to you guys. So mm-hmm. as soon as they get, they give us the notice, we'll, we'll give you guys notice. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Um, but man, that, again, that's it for this week's show. Tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408 909 PJFF. Download the official pillaging app uh, available for iOS and Android. It's free. Uh, big shout out to One Nation, fanware.com, dc 4 custom tees.com, and mybookie.ag. Uh, again, be sure to listen to our network partners, Ladies of Darkness, put on waivers, uh, uh, East Coast Nation, the No Ledge Podcast, the Inebri Nation Podcast. The Blackout Podcast coming at you soon this week and the Crow's Nest, which is on hiatus. Until then, keep the wind in your sails and the rum in your mug. And pillage on, Raider Nation. This has been a product of the Crow's Nest Podcast Network. I'm Kenny Stapler, joined always by your boy Chick. We out you. Peace. Go Raiders. Like a bread train coming, you're blowing the town. Like a diesel motor, you never shut down. With your pistons pumping, you're mowing them down. It's so sad to see they all lay their money down. When you're gone, hell, you ain't acting right. When you're gone, I can still see your eyes. When you're gone, this will be my last goodbye. When you're gone, gone. It's <laughs>